Today's episode is brought to you by Liquid Death Mountain Water. Murder your thirst. Today's guest is, um, I mean, the, da- the dude is just a real, you know, he's gone the road most traveled and then the road he wanted to travel. Um, we're going to learn, you know, I don't know if we're going to learn shit, but we're going to do our best, man. Uh, I'm just honored to be here, here with him today. Uh, I actually met him 20 years ago. But uh, neither one of us really remembers it. But um, but we'll get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Jim Brewer. I, once you realize the point of you're not in it for the rest of the world, you're in it for you and f- for what you want to put out there, I don't care what this one says, or what, what, what movie they'll put me. I don't care. Yeah. It's, this is, you can't get a better life than what you're doing right now. Yeah. You can't. You you beat the system. Yeah. That is, uh, there's no better thing in life. You control your destiny. Yeah, I think I feel sometimes... Are we rolling, Sean? I think I feel sometimes like... There's always this thing like... Like if you don't... There's like a validation. This like this this invisible validation. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That comes yeah, from... Yeah, I know all that. It's this Hollywood thing. It's like, oh, if I don't... You know, I could have... I could be selling tickets, but if I'm not on The Tonight Show, man, I'm a no... You know, there's no... I don't have that... I haven't been licked by the goose or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's so why I start. I started out. I wanted to be accepted by, by this guy and this guy and this comedian, because all comedians are like, unless you're accepted by this guy or that guy, right? And um, you're not in. I'm not in. And and to be honest with you, I didn't like any of them because <laughs> I didn't like any of them. They were. I I grew up uh, very very family oriented morals grounded uh, g- when i grew up it was god family friends everyone looks after each other this industry is i'll slice slice your throat i'll dance in your blood and then videotape it and make money off yeah, it yeah and and it, it's uh it's traumatizing is the best word to use it and uh i i, I went through a, i went through a lot uh through the whole coming up the whole system i learned so much i'm glad what i learned you know sometimes i reflect i I talk a lot about uh you're talking about things god it's so sad i don't even know where to start so yeah no uh, thanks for coming in man it started with the clubs uh, doing the city clubs and uh the city in new york city and uh you know, it was it was. Uh, I can. I knew there was envy and and people were jealous and like, ah, what what am I doing to bother you? What am I doing to bother you? Right. I'm doing my set and this is bothering you. It's yeah. bothering you that they're laughing. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what what is going on? So uh, as as time went on at Hollywood, I realized it is it was the most vile. It's soulless. Yeah. Right. There's, yeah, you look for this, you look to think at some point this thing has to have a heart or some compassion and there's, and it never turns that. And if anything, it's, it lures you in and going, no, I'm here for you. I'm gonna give you some honesty and compassion. And then when you're not looking at it, I fell for it again. It's uh, yeah. It's pretty. It's uh. It'll make sushi out of you. It doesn't even. It's. <laughs> yeah, I know. It'll I make know. fucking sashimi. Tra- traumatizing is a good word, man. Like I have uh, I have a friend who just got in trouble. He was using a. They caught him. That he was using a racial slur, and and it's crazy. Like they uh, so are. A news outlets this was fascinating to me news outlets that never would have even paid attention to him before are now like put like just using the term racial slur in their headlines right Ugh. so basically they're using 
his mess up, you know, his mistake to just to get their clicks. And it's like, yeah, it's just because they're it, uh, in the way they're using the word now. Like they're using the racial, you know what I'm saying? They're then using it. And I don't understand what that is or where it comes from, but I consider all them bottom feeders. Yeah. They're complete bottom feeders. And. But there's people, there's real humans that are attached to the, that are in the tank, you know? And it's like. They're in the tank. Their days are coming. Yeah. You can't live forever with, with, with trying to do that to people. Did you, um. So was there a point where you kind of felt like, okay, I'm going to take myself out of this some, or I'm going to oh, yeah. slow this train down? Like, I just remembered, just from an outsider's perspective, I just remember, dang, that's Jim Brewer, man. He's one of the funniest guys that there is, and he's a star. Like, I didn't, I never noticed that you, like, separated yourself from, like, some of the vibe or the industry or something. Did did you feel like you kind of did that? Oh, I, I know I did. It was, uh, first it was the, what once... You know, I kind of got, I won't say shot out of a car. I had a drive. I was confident. I was cocky. So in 89, I decided this is what I'm doing forever. Right. And I was the I was doing clubs and it was out of Florida. And, Were you doing well then? Yeah. And I had goals. I was like, I'm going to become house MC to the middle. And then when I'm middle, I'm going to make your life miserable yeah, trying to follow me. That shit was fun. And I loved that. Oh, being in the middle was fucking good. You get off to 22 minutes, you're a fucking legend. Crushing <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. And then they're like, we want to flop you. Not not for the same pay, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> so then st- I went through that stage. We're like, I don't like following the kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's always that guy, dude. Yeah. And then, they, and then you meet, and then you come across some people that, that school you. Yeah. Like, oh, you th- oh, you think I've never seen someone like you before? Okay, you know what? I'll go up before you. Ping, bang, boom, yeah. bing. Follow that kid. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't flip flop. Yeah. And then um, once TV started, uh, I was actually on a on a an old black show called the Uptown Comedy Club. That was my first big. It, it wasn't huge, but it was that was a, a weekly show. It was syndicated. Uptown Comedy Club was it? So was it sketches and stuff? Yeah, no and way. When I say, was it awesome? You know what it was? It was. It was the best television show I've ever been on in my life. And why I say that? Because there were no egos. Uh, everyone was. Everyone was helping each other. I, I've and I thought this was. I thought this was the industry, yeah. and not only that, they would they would talk to us like the producers were sitting. It was in Harlem. Yeah, it was on 125th and Fifth in '89. Uh, no, this is '92. Damn, that must have been. That was such a hype time too. There was so much like, I'm sure, especially in Harlem, there was like a, just a lot of fun energy in the air. Oh my god! And, and it was it was it was a tough area. Oh yeah, you know, dicey. I, I saw someone get shot. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was Tra- Tracy Morgan was on that show, and I'll never forget it. It, it taught me about uh, the hood, yeah, and and a different side of of what you. St- it's just a completely different side of life that I. That no college could ever teach you. There's no oh, politician yeah. could uh, teach you. When I'll never forget what happened was I heard pa 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 pa, right? And Tracy Morgan goes, "Who got shot?" And I went, oh, you heard the fireworks? He was, I, I wasn't fireworks. Someone yeah. got shot. <laughs> but he said it as as Calmly. If, yes. Yeah. And then he went, oh, he's across the street. Oh, he's struggling. And I still <laughs> thought he was kidding. <laughs> like he's play by play, like he's yes. out Michael suddenly. Yeah. yeah. And then Look at turn. this guy. Can't even get another yard. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, he might get another. Bro- oh, he's down. He's on the ground. He's flattened out. Oh, he's trying to get back up. He's up to his. Oh, he's down again. I mean, he's oh, he's out of bounds, ball. man. When it comes to being alive, this guy's out of bounds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and here comes the hecklers. <laughs> Look at you now. Look at There's nothing worse than being shot. You're, and you're getting heckled. And yeah. now the hecklers come while you're struggling for for your life <laughs> for your life oh he leaking he leaking and then he it's was always leaking that hard yeah. and i'll never forget the one guy had no teeth he came up i swear to god he goes you smell that that's like but you smell the smoke it smelled like when i was in bomb in vietnam you could still smell the smoke and i went oh my god 
and I'll never forget. It's just the blood is dripping yeah. over the curb, and <laughs> and it's going down the drain. Yeah. Us and and then the paramedics come like, yeah, you know, so two Jews walk in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Greek show for you, bro. And still, they look at you now. Yeah. Looky. <laughs> I was like what? And they're like, all right, let's go back to rehearsing. And then a church choir shows up also, though, for no reason at the air. <laughs> like it's just amazing, dude. Mm, yeah. So that to go from that to uh, wow. then the real Hollywood came, and I'll tell you what, I'll let you in on lose something, but I'm not gonna drop names. Okay. But I'll never forget the, the, these are black producers. Uh, a guy named Kevin Brown mm -hmm. and Andre Brown, uh, and he was later on Thirty Rock. But he, they would come to us and they would tell us about vanity and losing your mind in Hollywood and be careful. And they came back from Hollywood to try and expand us, and they sat us down. And they're like, "You ain't gonna believe what we saw." And like, what was you see? <laughs> and they said, "We saw so and so huge name, so and so." huge name <laughs> and so-and-so big name back in the day chicken hawking at a party and i went what, what see you're white i, I said what's chicken hawking everyone like ah, he's white he don't know chicken i said what's chicken hawking <laughs> that's when you uh hanging out with boys at a transvestite i went what <laughs> what chicken uh see now you now you're telling stories now you're telling stories yeah but I never forgot that. Three years later, this name, Ping! <gasps> huh. Busted one, Chicken Hawking. That one's sick. This one, Bing! Busted! Yeah. Huh. They swept that up. That's what I call. Uh, to me, Hollywood's a mafia. It's a big, dark mafia. Yeah, it is. And then what happens is, I remember one of them, it was like, the mobsters come. They're like, we understand. Uh, not mobsters, like a time, right, right, right. Whatever, You're talking whatever about, gang yeah, you want to the call. The attorneys, yeah, right. And they come along, like, listen, you sign this, you do some movies there. We'll put the soul on the table. We got enough money to make this go away. Ping, it's gone. No one ever brings it up. No one ever brings it up with this person. That's crazy. And there's two or three of them. Huge, huge. But I guess what I'm saying is, by the time. I started doing Sound It Live and the Half Baked, blah, blah, blah. And, and TV thing, you know, Tim Allen, all this shit. It was, that's when I really saw how dark and so, it's just, it was dark. It, it's, I get creeped out. I get scared to death. It was soulless. Yeah. Never seen anything. It, and I still, every time I get out there, I feel like, oh man, I just, I don't feel life out there yeah I don't feel it at all you know what i know i've always said when i get off the plane there i feel like i'm in the office it always like um i just feel like i'm in an office constantly it always every light feels like a fluorescent light it feels like it never ends um but it's hard to find a it is it's hard to find a comfort out there but there's always this dangle of a carrot yeah and it's a carrot and i don't even know what it is because like it's vanity is vanity it's vanity is it you know you want this. Right. You know you want this. You're better than so-and-so. You know you're better than so-and-so. You get this, then it'll be worth this. Yeah. And then your and then your road will be worth this. Yeah. You want to be you think that person deserves to be in arenas or on billboards? You should be on take you want it. <laughs> <laughs> it's there's a little that no, is No, I believe that I'm that's thinking, what we're so as you're on. saying it, I'm thinking that I'm thinking I'm trying to feel like, you know, a lot of times things will land for me in my feelings like is it vanity? Is it It's vanity. Yeah, it's something of an ego. It's ego and vanity. Yeah, yeah. It's ego, it's vanity. I want to be better than them. Yeah, it's uh yeah, it's uh It's not easy. No, it's not easy. Well, and I I think also you start to see the other like you start to see the other side of it too, where it just, there's never like an understanding. You never get to talk to the person to have the conversation about what's, it's just, there's never any real instructions. It's all kind of vague. 
It, you're the, right. The business is vague. The money is vague. It's all. It's all vague. And there's all extra people always stacked in at the last minute. You never met. <laughs> right. And they are they're living and they've owned your family now. They're just crazy. Your grandfather's now their grandfather. It's like, a nonstop Scarface movie. Yeah. yeah you yeah. go to you got their money. You got their oh seven of you. <laughs> with, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What just happened? We think it was, what's going on? They're cutting you. They're they're putting you in a commercial for bone saws as they're cutting <laughs> you in half. You know, put this dress on <laughs> and then take out your take your pants off, and this is gonna get you big time. It's gotten <laughs> sick, man. Here's a question right here that came in from someone. This isn't live, Jim. This is a, just a man that sent this right here. Sure. What up, Jim? Huge fan, man. Man, ever since half baked, man. Anyways, uh, I've been a comedian for about five years. What do you think the future is for us uh, here with COVID going on? By the way, man, why your eyes always look so high? <laughs> gang, gang. Um, what, future good question. What is kind of, yeah, do you think some of the future will be on? Things slowed down during COVID for sure. I mean, a lot of stages are still open. It's one of the reasons why I ended up coming here because stages are open and because it's a free state here, you know, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's what, what do you think, man? Where do you see kind of some, uh, comedy going? Like, do you see anything different? Does the stage still hold the same? Like, this is the last point of... Uh... I'll tell you what, after doing last night in uh, um, Zany's last night, I felt like I was in a 2,000 seat theater. Wow. The electricity of, of people was explosive. And there was a there was a um, a woman a little older on my right, Chatta, and and had what a mustache? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> she's she's eating her chips, and everyone's like ah! And I turned and I went, "Are you okay? Yeah. You're not having fun?" And she went, "I'm just enjoying being out. I'm just having my chips, <laughs> and I'm just so happy I don't have a mask on. I'll start paying attention in a minute." <laughs> and I started, I laughed so hard. I went, "I feel you." The crowd yeah. cheered. There's a um. Live is never going to die. Even if we have to go back to the 20s and do it in people's houses, you, you're not going to stop that. Right. That's the will of humanity. You can't stop us from being social as though they're doing their darndest, yeah. whoever they are, but they're doing, a, they're doing everything they can to scare the living life out of you, to, to try to convince you that you are capable of murdering your grandmother yeah, know, yeah, and feeling guilty about, about hugging people and being with one another. To me, that's, that's the cult. Oh, you know, they sick. point fit. That's the real cult. The ones that are going, you know, are you ready to live your life knowing you killed your grandmother? Yeah. You're the cult. You're the problem. That stems from pure dark. There's nothing good about that. Yeah. We're only here one time. We need to hug. Yeah. We need to see smiles. We need to touch. That's humanity. You take that away, it's over. Yeah, if it's you take that away, what's the point? I'm just here. I'm just a, you know, I'm a piece of a video game that can't even really play. You know? And that's what they want. And people fall for it. Hook, line, say it. Every day, watch the news like this. Uh, like a parakeet. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> the numbers are going up. The numbers are going up. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers are going up. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. <laughs> Wear your mask. Grandma killer. Grandma killer. <laughs> Grandma killer. Oh, my God. Get back in your cage. Yeah. Please. Oh, I don't know where, you know, people always ask me, I don't know where we're going. Because every time I think I know where we're going, uh, then boom, the, the TikTok video, uh, person takes off. And then the Instagram person takes off. And the podcast takes off. No one knows where, what, what people want to, or comedy is wide open. Yeah. Everyone needs to laugh. And there's, and, and there's every extreme type of comedy so yeah. it's never gonna die you need to laugh but back to that guy's question i don't know where it's going i don't know i don't know i have no clue i'm not worried about it i can only do what i can control I'm right 53 uh you know i still need someone to help me with uh, I, I need this guy yeah. i just found this guy that's sean yeah i just found my sean i'm like you need to edit yeah. Like I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I started podcast. I'm looking at my podcast. You got a new podcast? 
yeah, I've been doing it, but then I stopped because I don't. I have to call the guy. Right. Yeah, you got to get on the system. That knows the person with the, and the he calls the girl. Yeah. yeah. I'm like with I, the weight with the cables. Yeah. Yes. I just I think I could post in two weeks. I need Sean. Yeah. Who goes? Okay. First of all, the lights. Like my, I was watching what I filmed Wednesday, and there's a shadow over my face yeah. every two seconds. Like I got, I got to look somewhat professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. My microphones don't look anything like this. It's yeah. like, it look like a, oh, yeah. a bebop. That fucking ham radio style. Yeah, it's so. I I need. I just found a show on. I have to tighten up. But you have to. You have to adjust. You have people to, would uh, love it, man. Your voice needs to be out there. I think you know people would absolutely love it. Uh it's there's there's neat guys starting one. Dana Carvey started one. Uh, he's um, a good human being. Oh, Dana Carvey's this exceptional man. He's a good human being. He's such a sweet uh, dad, and he's a loving guy, and he's very, he's realistic. Yeah. He's like respectful of everyone, but yep. also realistic and so smart yep. that you just have to listen to him when he talks, kind of. Um, and he can drift from a story into like a, into funny, like from so real into funny, like in like like a stream almost you don't even notice it flowing you know like the guy's blood to the fucking drain you know yeah he, yes yeah. yeah and he's a he's like you say he's a real human being yeah oh That's, yeah i'm always rooting for dana carvey yeah i'm always checking like what's going on with dana carvey yeah he's a neat guy and he got a he took off a show business for a while and went and just lived his life and raised his kids in uh san francisco yeah i did you guys work oh, together i don't even remember i don't know a ton he of he hosted he okay. hosted when I was on Saturday Night Live. Okay. He couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have been more giving. Couldn't have been... Uh, he, he was he was like the big brother that came. He was the frat brother that came. So let me tell you about the frat house here. Right. Oh, nice. And let me tell you about the ways and yeah. yeah. So he was... He's always... Char he was charming. And you remember those things. You remember when you cross people's paths, what they were. Um, That's a good point. But I do... I do... Uh, it was right after... A guy like him, it was at the end of SNL, Half Baked came out, and I was just done with the whole industry. Really? I was I was done. Were you burnt out also though physically and stuff, do you think? From I mean, were you just exhausted? Emotionally. Yeah. Emotion emotional I, it was it was <laughs> it was so exhausting. Sound It Live was it it, it was as much as as the times when you're up to bat and you hit the ball in the upper deck, to just to get to the plate is so exhausting. Yeah. This one takes your idea. Right. This one takes party idea and does it, but you can't say it now because he's the one that's in the room with Lauren picking the sketches. Yeah. And then you finally step up to this person and now you're a problem. And you're like, what the? It was, it was, and my wife, my wife, there's times when I really wanted to knock her flat on her back. Oh, she yeah. just She don't get it. You don't get it. Yeah. And she'd be like, no, you don't get it. You don't get it. I can see what you don't see. And so I remember she was looking at me in New York City, and she goes, you know, why don't you just quit? Or are, you cr are, you, are you listening to yourself? You don't quit. <laughs> you grind through, dopey. Are yeah. you seriously out of your mind? You grind through to you're just nubs in a wheelchair. Don't you even... Yeah, she's like, you're smoking pot. And what's her name? What's her first name? D. Yeah, D. Don't you Are even you fucking know? D, you don't know shit. Yeah, you D. don't quit show... I'm on top of the game. You see his tattoo? Yeah. You see his tattoo? It says, SNL <laughs> alum. <laughs> Danny Aykroyd, Belushi, yeah. it's an alum. Carvey, <laughs> Farley, I'm in it. I'm in the club. And you can't take those stripes off. I'm in it. Yeah. Millions of people trying to get me. I'm in it. Yeah. There's people buying my doll. Yeah. <laughs> There's people doing that in aisles right now. So she's going. There's dead guys doing that. A lot of dead guys die like that. <laughs> <laughs> you have a guy on, on the detective just sending you, hey, we got another, uh, we got another um, uh, Jim Brew impersonator over here, guys. Come see it. Yeah, look at this mook over here. <laughs> He's dropping a deuce and then uh, that was it. Show's over. Stunk like a summer gun. <laughs> Trying to keep the flies out was the tough part. <laughs> here's, here's a question from a guy right here that came. Oh, wait, well, let's finish up. So D got you out? But having her perspective helped? Is that what you're saying or no? It was scary as hell. 
But her perspective has always helped on many things that have happened in my wow. life. Many things that have happened. But she's like, look at you. You're smoking pot nonstop. You're becoming a an angry person. Uh, and it's just it's consuming your life and you don't you always this one's a, you're talking about stealing but she's like i saw it my own two eyes why do you need so bad you're, you're talented mm. like you don't you don't you don't you just don't yeah and we did and i remember no matter who we had we had producers, movie producers. She didn't kiss me like I don't like that guy's an asshole. He, he made this yeah. movie and this movie. He's an he asshole. He made Bridges in Madison County. Yeah, like. he's he's an asshole. Yeah. And there, and and this guy I, made Babe Pig in the City. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm right. Saying? It has been reported that Americans are overpaying on car insurance by over twenty one billion dollars. Silly Americans. But searching for a better deal can take too long. You got to get on the internet. You got to keep this window open. Do this one. Call this person. You got to call 40 people. And next thing you know, you, don't, you somebody stole your car. TheZebra.com is the nation's leading car insurance comparison site because it's the only place you can compare quotes side by side from over 100 providers and choose the best for you in 90 seconds or less. Plus, they will never sell your information to the spammers. So you won't get all those unwanted calls or emails. You just answer a few questions. It's a few questions. Somebody, people ask you questions all the time. You can handle this. TechCrunch calls the Zebra Kayak for auto insurance. How much can you save on your car and home insurance? Find out. Find out fast. Go today and start saving at thezebra.com slash Theo. That's thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O. Spelled T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash T-H-E-O. Why pay extra if you don't have to? Do you have a hard time taking pills, huh? Hey there, buddy. Hey, hey, I'm Norm McDonald. Hey, uh, uh, the thing, uh, what do you call this thing? It's like a, do you have a hard time taking pills, huh? You're not alone. You're not alone. I have a hard time. Sometimes I, I take a big pill. I can't swallow it. Cough it back up. And I'll chop it up and grill it. And eat it in small baby bites. If you like sex, you'll love BlueChew.com. If you want sex, they can help. At BlueChew.com, you get the first chewable with the active ingredients of sildenafil and tadalafil. BlueChew.com, their affiliated physicians work with you to find the dosage. An active ingredient that is best for you to keep your wiener popping. A consult is free, so it's cheaper than those other two medicines that you hear about all the time. It only takes a few minutes to connect with a BlueChew.com affiliated physician. If you don't know about your wiener or what's going on inside of it, well, get BlueChew. You and your partner will love it. Here's a great deal for you. Support the podcast. Support the podcast. Visit bluechew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code Theo. That's right. Get that wiener on daddy. You feel me? Just pay $5 shipping. That's B L U E C H E W dot com. Promo code T H E O. Um, what's this guy up to? Yeah, what is this fucking homeowner? And we started a family. What? Look at this guy. So that's the end of the story. And we started a family. And we started a family. <laughs> okay, yeah. Now I'm three kids deep. And pregnant. That's how it ends. And right? pregnant. That's right. That's what happened. It is. We were done with, with the SNL. Went to San Fran. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh. Ta-da. Kid came out. His head was all stretched. It was a mess. Uh. Hey, man. How you doing? Um, Jim, want to give a shout out to First Off Mendham High School and Giuseppe's Pizzeria. Uh, Chester, New Jersey. I know. I know you're familiar with that area. Uh, talking, speaking of New Jersey, wanted to ask you as a question. Um, give me some underrated New Jersey stand-up comics. I know there's so much talent in our state, uh, and I know you got a good pulse on that. So give me, give me three names that maybe we don't know about that I should be following. Is the stages open there? Yes. No. Um, That's a fair answer. Yes and no. Uh, yes. The answer is yes, because I was doing um, like Tuesday nights at the Stress Factory. Oh, yeah. But he has the setup outside, which is bigger than the inside. 
and they were uh, he really did it smart he, did, he tented the whole thing in mm -hmm. heat i mean it was in december it was freezing but the only mishap is behind you <laughs> is the parking garage so you know you're 15 minutes in and there's a <laughs> <laughs> And then it slap it, slap it. Yeah. And you go And then a spousal abuse, don't forget Yeah, look. you stupid, yeah. shut your face. Yeah. What were you looking at him for? I wasn't looking at him all day. And you get out of the car, you and so uh yeah, so that's But then lot. I just played uh uh what's the place? It's 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 in Red Bank. I played there. The outdoor, Vogel? The outdoor place? Was it indoor? It was indoor. Uh, Yeah, the Red Bank. It's like a theater. It's called the Vogel. There is there is the Count Basie. Yeah, Count Basie. That's what I played at. But they can't do Count Basie. Oh. So now they have the Vogel, which was only... It It was a beautiful theater within the Count Basie. Oh, nice. And so... But it, it was... You know, it's like 200 people. It's still and awesome for now. And they have to wear masks. No. It's the first show I did where they have to wear masks. It was awkward. Was it? it? Was, yeah, it was weird. You could tell they were annoyed. And they can't even, and what if they want to do, I guess they got no snacks, huh? No snacks. Probably. They had snacks, but they're literally they're like, make sure, just go like yeah. that. Yeah. Because the governor lives in the town, and he comes in. I understand you're not <laughs> keeping up with the rules and regulations. This is for your safety. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to kill your grandmother, do you? Yeah, yeah I know. I see we are at 27%. There will be a rest made. <laughs> Ugh. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I just don't understand in most people's minds, because it's crazy. Some of the smartest people I know f go along with everything that's going on here so easily. It's like, how do you not see... So what the numbers on some on some news channel that oh, their only goal is to keep you watching, but if you drive by the hospital or if you look by a, a, a you can go to a, a clinic, a walk-in clinic here. There's nobody that like. How does it not weigh to people that to, to at least alert in their heads something is not right here? I I think more people know something's not right. I think also. Uh, they're doing a real good job with the eye candy fear. And I'm wondering if it's going to break. Like uh, when you're on the highway and everyone's afraid to pass the state trooper. Oh, yeah. Even though he's going 60. You're like, well, I can't get pulled over again 65. Yeah. And then the one finally does. You're like, let's follow this guy. Yeah, I saw his way. Like, and then as soon as you enough, you're like, <laughs> you got. I kind of feel the minute if it ever happens, and it has to happen. Yeah. Where people go, we're not shutting down, but yeah. you need a couple people to do. Yeah, you find me. So what? You can't. Th none of these things are laws. Right. Right. If you ever end up going to a, a court, you're gonna you're gonna somehow win. Because you win. Yeah. It's scare time. We find you. So what? We're going to revoke you. Go ahead. Yeah. You can't, you don't have, you can't make the law. So, you know, we could talk about this all yeah. we want, but no one's doing anything. Right. And that that's the scary part. But it is bizarre to me how many people will watch this and then they'll, and then they'll come after me foaming at the mouth going, you know, and their thing's always the same. People like you. Dying. Yeah. Or you know how many people died? Yeah. And I feel like going, no, do you know how many people that you believe died because of what you're watching? Right. You know, I was on a podcast. Like, day. I couldn't even find a dead person. I bet you if you gave me two hours right now, I couldn't find a dead person from COVID. If I went door to door, I'm talking banging, even breaking and entering, doing anything, coming in the back door, smoking people out, doing a fire in the back, standing by the front with a net. Or uh, I bet I couldn't. <laughs> I'm serious, bro. I bet I couldn't find one fucking dead person. I haven't found one. I have I have a couple. First of all, I had it. Uh, my daughter had it. My wife had it. Um, another good friend, his whole family had it. it for us, it was, a bit, it was a cold. Right. It was a bad cold. Um, oh, yeah, I agree. I believe there's a flu. I believe there's a, a, a special variant of a flu going there's on. There's always a flu in the right. winter. Yeah. There's flus, there's colds, bronchitis. And it's it's all gone. It's funny how all that stuff is gone. It's gone. Yeah. It's just gone. 
Where's and, the f- and people will hear this and be like, no, it's not me. But it is, though. If you think about all the time you heard about it, like you just have to trust the logic of my head. I don't even think I'm coming from a place of judgment. I think I'm just coming from a real place inside of me that feels like this doesn't make sense. It makes zero sense. Yeah. That's common sense. And that's and what they're pushing is the whole, it's science. Science doesn't have common sense, but you can manipulate numbers. You can oh, manipulate yeah. science to do scare tactic. That's the difference. So you can put science as your religion and as your fact or whatever. It still doesn't define logic. Yeah. And I'd rather die by some logic, man. Like my mom's, my mother's a hard work and... Been working her whole life. She's like, if I die, I die. You know, like my I don't want to be. I don't want to never see anybody the last four years of my life. Listen, I, this is a good story, but I always bring this up. I don't want to bum people out. It's not like what, but my wife, 2012, uh, first time she had breast cancer. All right, mm-hmm. boom, breast come off. Blah, blah blah. She's gonna go on that. Show. Wow, breast off, huh? Uh, oh yeah, that wow. histor- whole shabiggle. 2014, it comes back in a lymph node. Got to take it oh. out, do the chemo and all that jazz. Um, we are now 2016, end of the year. Um, hey, bad news. It's everywhere. It's everywhere but her brain. What do we do? Well, she's got a couple months. We'll give her pain medicine. Or she can live on a trial. So she's been on a trial drug in Philadelphia. It'll be, it'll just pass four years. Thank you, God. Now, the point of that story is we've already been living the life of common sense. And she too, oh, the family and everyone else are the ones that go, you know, you got to be very careful. And, it, and you, you know, your immune system and Jim shouldn't travel as much. She's like, you know what? I, no one knows when we're going to die. Yeah. I'm not going to live <clears throat> recklessly, but you're not going to control my life and how I should live and the way I should live because you are scared. And my wife and I live That's interesting. the way we live. And and we when we would go somewhere, if I saw someone sick, I'd go, hey, man, don't go over there because that guy's sick. But I'm not going to ask the whole place to wear a mask and, and double down because my wife. That's my responsibility. Right. That's my thing. That That's part of the. You know, if you if you're 400 pounds and you got you get the gout three times a year and you have diabetes, back you got you got to be careful with everything. But back off the sugar shrimp for sure. Exactly, whatever you're doing, yeah. you got to take it down a level. Bronchitis yeah. is going to take you out. Yeah, a hard staircase is going to take you out. Yeah. So this whole mentality is pure insanity, and it makes no sense. And you know what? I don't care about people's backlash anymore. Yeah. I know it's right. Right. I know it's in my heart of heart. I know what common sense, God gave us common sense. Yeah. Thought process, instinct. Your instinct tells you something weird is going on. Yeah. Common sense tells you something weird is going yeah. on. Nobody, you can't, so yeah, you're, I agree. you're right on it, man. You gotta live your life. Yeah, I wanna live my life. No, not like an idiot, but you live your life. Yeah, yeah, I want, and I want to. Like, that's what I want. It's like, I think that's the thing. And, and like, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people have also the, the side effects of people dying or struggling from like um, being hurt from like addiction or not seeing their loved ones broken hearted. The gay, the, they had a fella, beautiful fella, gay gentleman that was a piano player at the comedy store. And he yeah. died because a lot of people think he died just because he got so lonesome, you know? And it's that's guesstimated, but the guy for twenty five years had been a pianist right there for the best, you know. My youngest daughter has has put on weight. She's depressed. She hates school. Yeah. She used to love it because she's got to wear a mask. They won't let them stay together. She she she. It's like being in a cubicle. Uh, cubicle. Her friends. It's it's the worst thing you can be doing to humanity. And anyone that wants to fiercely defend it. I'm ready to go at it with you. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. You're not going to control me and the billions of people that feel the same way. Amen. It's over. And there's a lot of people that, do, yeah, there's a lot of people that feel the same way. And we just have to start speaking up in small ways. And also, I think just speaking up in our actions, you know, like be respectful 
and but also just speak up in our actions like that doesn't mean go out and do something bad or something no. aggressive it just means stand your ground for what you believe also stand your ground do be fearless yeah fearless and i you know i was on a podcast where i don't know um who was it? Chris DeStefano? Who Fitz was Simmons. it? Fitzsimmons. Oh, Greg Fitzsimmons? Yeah, Fitzsimmons. Yeah. Fitz Dog. And he's, he's uh, I've known him a while, but he's... He toes a line. He's 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 in it. Yeah. He's in the, the LA world, and he keeps going oh, back, yes. and I just kept going, ping, hitting yeah. the ball right. Get, ping, don't give me that nonsense, bro. Yeah. And he's a good guy, and we can hang forever, but he tried a little bit. I'm like, no, no. He's like, oh, do you believe this? I'm like, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I've seen it with my own eyes. You know, there's a guy, we have this crew uh, where I live, uh, and we it's an amazing community that we built. And this is who I'm going to start bringing on my podcast because they're, I, 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 I don't mind being funny, but I also, my big st struggle with you is. Yeah. Uh, you could say it. I've struggled with pornography mostly. <laughs> I don't struggle with that. Oh, you don't? No, no, oh. no. I, I probably did when I was younger. It's a I think racket. everybody does. It's a racket. But I'll tell you why that's bad too. Oh, it's bad. It's horrible. I'll tell you why that's that's real bad. That is another oversaturated, well targeted, um, and it's it's. I always I always say this. You remember the first time you saw it? Oh yeah. Dude, mine was a drawing. This it. dude Nick in our town two dollars he would draw you some cooter for the weekend right so you'd hit him up on friday or thursday night if you wanted a good sketch right <laughs> but even on friday afternoon you could get a, a scribble i remember this and he would freaking law you know he'd launch you out that two dollar hit bro and you'd keep it all weekend <laughs> and then somebody chiseled a set of tits into like a birch tree by us <laughs> and people would go out there and jerk off by it kids and adults bro not at the same time but you know you had to be respectful but you know everybody was out there i remember that it was a good time for I mean, me it was it was phil's dad's tape oh phil come on and we were let's call phil let's call, <laughs> call phil and phil get his dad get his fucking 80 year old dad on the line and talk about the lives he's ruined phil's dad's tapes ruined he oh. i was I don't care what anyone says. When you first see it, you're traumatized. It's crazy. You look at the whole world differently. You look at women differently. Yeah. You you go from staring at them to staring at them. Yeah. And you think that's why. And if you notice, it's gotten more violent, more evil as time went. You know, like this whole thing. Oh who, yeah. Who came up with? If you if, can't even do that. Smack smack smack. Yeah. Who, who said I love you so much? Smack, smack. Yeah. I love you so. <laughs> God, I love you. Yeah. That is legal rape. And a lot of Heimlich maneuver. There's all there's all types of like right. you know. Heimlich, let me wait, wait. I got a punch in your temple right before your orgasm. Let me know when you. Let me <laughs> pink. You said you were orgasm. You said you were going there. Yeah. Uh, uh, come on, we gotta do this again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we gotta do this. Again. <laughs> Are you sure this time? Good. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's like crazy. It's legal rape. And I, yeah, it's crazy that that, and like that, it's just, it's freaking bizarre, man. It's the dark arts, dude. I was addicted to it for a while and I do pretty good these days, you know, but every now and then it seeps in, man. You know, uh, it's hard to keep it out. I will not see now when I, I once I had daughters, that's another whole. Oh, that'd be different. I, think. I have three girls, so it, in my head, I'm always like, oh, God, if, uh, if I do I, this, is it going to come back around? Correct. Some, yeah. I'm one of those guys. If mm -hmm. I do this. That's wiener karma, dog. So <laughs> it is. But you're right. And I'm like, someone's going to come in and, and, my, and the kid's right. going to be into this. And it all sparked. But that's how I, I, I think like that. Sometimes. That's that energy flow. Yeah, cause it could be possible. Here's a guy right here who used to be a mime who fucking is recovering. <laughs> He's a recovering mind. He probably had a question. Yeah, beautiful fella. Like before we even do it, I'm gonna predict. Okay. It's definitely in the half baked world. I could see that. Maybe why? What makes you say that? His eyes. He okay. looks a little lit up. Oh, he does look a little lit looks up. Looks a little just a lit up. Gauge but pink. But they, I don't know. He's very confident with the shirt and hat. Uh, he looks like his name would be Sam. He seems like he has a very like a name that's kind of ambiguous. Mm, maybe I'm I'm gonna say it's more of the uh, midwestern 
like Midwestern hip name like a okay. Trevor. Okay. Yeah. A Trevor. I could see Trevor Trant. We had a guy Trant, bus. Trant. I liked it. Yeah, like a Trant. Yeah, we had a guy bus named Brunch growing up. <laughs> My, varsity. Yeah. What's up, Vars? I <laughs> uh, see what he's got. What up, Theo? What up, Jim Brewer? He's My young. name is Danny. I'm from Clearwater, Florida. Ooh, ooh, um, Jim, boy. I got a question for you, man. So I actually went to Coconuts Comedy Club and did a comedy set there on open mic, and I heard that that's where you started out doing comedy. So I just got a question for you, man. How is it getting started in comedy, and what do you recommend to be able to go with the time limit? Because the first time I did comedy, I swear to God, I lasted 30 seconds, and then I said, yeah. I can't do this, and I walked off stage. Uh, and the second time I did comedy, I went 30 seconds over the five limit, open mic time limit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, words and advice would be appreciated. Much love. Gang, gang, Theo. Gang, bro. Well, oh. if you're Carlos Mencia now if you went that long, dude. You're basically your, or you're Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it, bro. You saw if you went that long the second time, you're doing fine. Yeah, yeah, I a hundred, a hundred percent. And yes, I used to uh, do coconuts. That's kind of the first chain that started giving me lots of work. And yeah, a lot of them were ramadas. Yeah, ramada, at the, dude. At the, at the uh, happy hour, it doesn't matter. I just I wanted to work. So, and I was way off with that kid. That kid has a good soul. Oh yeah, nice kid. They they used to have you know people have been murdered at every ramada at every ramada. There's a uh, there's been a murder at every Ramada. Really? Now, yeah, finally, it took. A, finally, a, yeah, it was about. It was like, finally, you know, I was waiting for the hundred <laughs> percent. They were at ninety nine for a real long time. They were hovering. I'm like, when is Biloxi gonna yeah, step yeah, up? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, waiting on yeah, Biloxi. Wait. It's right next to a Greyhound station. I thought it would go first. Come on. <laughs> But yeah, man, pretty cool. There's there's a website that tracked it. There was like one of those like a uh, this is like probably four years ago that there was a, the website finally closed down. But there was like murders at I guess every Ramada. Are you <laughs> you married? Uh, uh-uh, I'm not married. That explains everything. I'm willing. I'm willing. I, I get and, and the reason why I say is like wow, if I had I because I couldn't imagine w- looking stuff like that up. But if I was alone yeah. and single, oh, yeah. I'd be looking up some <laughs> wild stuff, just dropping facts that people weren't even prepared for yeah. me to slap down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Ping! Yeah. Yeah, you know tarantulas have heavy feet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like just fucking hitting them hard. Um, I... uh. Uh, what, did, when you look back on some of those times, do you feel good about them? Like when you look back on your on your Hollywood times, I feel great about everything I did. Yeah, because I I do I love the journey I've been on. I love that uh, the move I made, and I I did have resentment for a while with a lot of things. Uh, I had animosity and anger. What was the anger about? Do you feel like it, like is it anger is so hard to pinpoint sometimes, and a lot of times it has to do with myself. You know, I find um, because I can be angry at others, but they're just doing their thing. They don't fuck it. You know, they're mm, just you know. This was a different anger. I, I'm I'm really I'm one of those guys too where I get angry for injustice. Oh yeah. So that infuriates me. That makes me want to. That makes me want to fight. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I want things to be fair. Just be fair, and not for me. There's there was something that was taken from me, and and sold. Oh, I see, like a project or something you had. Yep. Right on. And given to someone, and I don't think that person even knows. And it blew up so big. Wow. So when I'm home with my little babies and and trying to, I wanted to stay home. <clears throat> um, so I took a radio gig and I'm watching that. That was a tough period. And oh. that's where, that's where, see now I do have like a deep moral godly th- thing and, and I'm not afraid to talk about it anymore. So at that time, my wife, I'll never forget, she's like, Jim, as I was in my basement looking, I was like, Ooh, right yeah. there, I met him, and I told him, 
And then he took, he gave, he sold it to them. I'm taking. She's like, Jim, I got twenty million dollars. Yeah. Twenty million dollars. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out there and going down. <laughs> I'm coming in. <laughs> Thief, liar, lawsuit. I was ready. You turned uh, into Henry Rollins at the very end. The first, all that I believed until the very end. I feel like you turned into like Henry Rollins in Black Flag. You know? Yes. I feel like you. Got, yes. That was pretty good. And she goes, I'll never forget. She's like, Jim, let him have it. I said, All right, seriously, is there something wrong with you? Is something wrong with you? Is something wrong? You don't get so. If that's all they got. They don't have what you got. I got, she's like, you got a beautiful house. We got a couple acres. You said you want to be home with your girl. You're home with your, with girls. your girls. Yeah. You you go to a radio show for two hours a day yeah. with your best friends. That's fun. What, yeah, but that just, don't let them have it. If that's all they got, it'll catch up to them. Cut two. Five years later, this one. Crash, burn, people turn on him. This one plummets, plummets beyond hard to the point where I started feeling bad. I'm like, oh man, it's, yeah, it's terrible what happened. The, and and the amazing part of it is, and I don't want to, I don't want to allude to names or anything. Yeah, no, and I'm not asking you to. But what is amazing for people, what it can help is years later. See, I got to hold my dad to his last breath, which is all I ever begged. Like, I said, God, please. All I want in life is I don't want that man alone. Mm -hmm. I want to be. I want to be there for him. World War II vet, grew up in in Newport, in in uh, uh, Dayton, Kentucky, Kentucky. Mm. Just not even the real Dayton. No, <laughs> cross the river from it's just ten kids, no mother. I mean, as raw as you can get. I didn't realize my dad had that in him until we saw Johnny Cash for the first time. You saw them together? Nuh uh. Yeah, I was like 10 years old, Long Island, um, Westbury Music Fair. And he came out, did the whole, hello, I'm John, bang, 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 bang. And he goes, yeehaw! I went, yeehaw, we live in Long Island. Yeah. What, what did he goes, I was born in Kentucky. I didn't know that. I'm a Kentucky guy, Hank Williams. <laughs> Senior, not junior. <laughs> junior can he the senior. Juniors. <laughs> and then I started so the point of the story is I'm all over the place, but he never complained in life. This man could have complained about everything. Mm. War for years. Uh his his first so he was alcoholic, just the things he saw. He never complained. Always there for me. Couldn't he was older, so he couldn't really interact much. But he was always just there, solid. Never talked. I think I remember four conversations with my dad. Wow. But they were powerful. They were powerful. He would just step in. Like, who are you talking about when you started playing with your donkey in the pictures? Yeah. When I went through that phase, he saw the pictures. He's like, hey, hey. What are you doing? I don't let your mother see that. It's really disturbing. Yeah. Enough with that. Yeah. Enough yeah. of that shit. Enough with that. Enough of that shit. Hey, we're going to play your donkey. That shit's going to get you in trouble. Okay, dad. <laughs> So he was really old. He he was he was uh, forty five when he had me. My mom was forty two. I was in an accident. My mom had wow. My At mom forty two to have a kid's so older back then. Right back then. So and my mom would tell me she she should have like three martinis. She's like yeah, you were supposed to be an abortion because they said you'd be retarded. That's what you were saying. You're like, I got pretty close, Ma. I said, well, look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look, look at it, at least. I tried. Yeah. I tried. I tried my best. Well, they said I beat Down syndrome in, I, in our town, man, because they thought I had it for like the first year and a half of my no life. No kidding. And then they literally told my parents that I beat it, dude. And so it was like, it, wow. it was like this kind of thing in our area. Wow. Pretty crazy. And um, so to be able to go through that in life and still have what I have now, I get tour what I want, and my kids, we've got an amazing... I've been all over the world, my kids, all over the, I mean, Africa and safaris. Really? You guys oh. been doing fun stuff, huh? Oh, yeah, I, bands I love, Metallica, ACDC. Uh, oh, that's awesome. I, I mean, it's like a, a living dream. And so watching these other people crash, it was a couple of years ago, I went to LA to promote something. Mm -hmm. 
and we already discussed how I feel about it. And I found this little neighborhood place. Cross Street was uh, IHOP. I don't know the neighborhood place. Really cool little hotel. And I went out to eat, and it was a little place on up the street. It was almost like te- uh, Mexican and, and pizza. And I was just sitting there, and this guy came up to me, one of the people. And I go, oh, hey. And he goes, hey, man, I just want to tell you, I, I, I really respect what you did with your dad. And you made this documentary, and I just, uh, I just, I, I respect what you do. And all I saw was that that was like grace and healing because if this person knew how I felt years before about this person and the other person involved, and now here they are coming back, like, I see where they're going and where my life is. And it's, they're hard to get through, but you don't know the long term right. when you stick to your thing. It, it's you just don't know when you're chasing the, it's amazing you need that balance um yeah if, yeah that, that makes sense a hundred percent it's hard to know like what the moment right now that it is part of a bigger painting you know it's so hard to know it's impossible and of course the way that we're built now with instantaneosity and doing stuff right now and this and that and jack and jill and jack you know doing whatever you want you could jerk off out of your pocket you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes you could get somebody to bring a mountain dew where you could you know you could kill some there's site, white websites you can get people killed you can do it all in a second yes you, there's there's so much like i control everything that there's never any like I'm going to let the higher powers and the powers that be control things. I'm yeah. going to live in the plan, you know. I tell you what, and uh. and the more Theo, the more I've done that in the last 5 10 years where I go, you know what? And and this is this is where th- things really shifted for me around 2008, 2009 and I started changing my stand up, I started changing my outlook. I always feared that people would see me as like, oh, we like all moral and stuff. And it's like, I feared that. Why do, Why did I fear that? What's wrong with being that? Yeah. And or so, trying to be also, it's a goal. It's a, it's just a, it's not even a goal. It's just an attempt. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's a way of living. Yeah. What's wrong with just giving goodness? You know what I mean? So the more, the minute I tapped into that and the more I said, you know what? Like now I'm going out and touring. Yes. I want to make money, blah, blah, blah. But at the end I get I get so much more out of, I know this sounds corny, touching lives. It is, I've done it a lot. And, and I, the more I go, I'm going to do this because I want to, ha- you know, it's, and I think a lot has to do with my wife. My wife, she goes, so she's, she's found Jesus years ago. And that was another whole, right. Oh, like, whoa, me. They whoa, 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 what's yeah. going on here? Yeah. Like it was boom. It was a powerful story, but just I didn't see it coming. Well, it's also when when people go and, and that, that experience for people is their own experience. Finding a higher power, finding a faith, that kind of thing. It's there. So even if you're like it's such a personal experience that yeah. it's hard to really kind of share with somebody in a lot of ways and for them to kind of um And you're instantly judged. Oh yeah. Oh, especially these days, dude. Now nah, yeah. you're a freak or you're you know, you yeah. think you're like, ah and she's nothing like that. Yeah. You know, she'll do things like this. She'll go, I get on the Metallica. I'm on I'm pouring with Metallica. Yeah. For me. That was a legend. Yeah. That was this a is the truth. greatest. This is the greatest. This is better than any sitcom. Yeah. I don't want to be in the movies. I'm torn with my Metallica guy. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So, um And you guys are out there, right? Who's the other opening band? And also There bro, is none. Fuck. I'm the opener. <laughs> no, that's crazy, dog. So uh, yeah, and it, I had, but before you worked with Metallica, had you worked with a band and it didn't work because it, you know, it never works for anyone. Uh no, I I did a little something in front of Alice in Chains once because it made me go up less. They were like, "Come on, down man. in a hole." But before yeah, we get to that, a hole, before we get to that, yeah. ah, ah, ah. They were so good, man. Um, 
Was that Perry Farrell? No, who was in that? No, no, no. That's Jane's no. Addiction. Y- yeah, yeah. It I is went to a close. one-year-old birthday party at Perry Farrell's house, dude. A friend of mine, Lee, like uh, they knew the family or whatever, so we went over there for his one-year-old party, and uh, me and Perry were just fucking sitting in the library, just, and literally, dude, I could not understand one word that he said. <laughs> he was describing different books to me on the shelf. Bro, I had no idea what was going on. That, is that that's uh, Jane's Addiction too, right? Yeah. That's uh, Jane's they says- came on Saturday Night Live. And I'll never forget this. I was so hopped up. So they did the first song, and they were they were damaged, damaged. So in between, they're like, hey, I'll never forget. I'm hanging out, and they go, he goes, Perry goes, hey, uh, can we do that song over? <laughs> and uh, the producer goes, it was live. Matter of fact, your second song is cut. They're the first band. <laughs> I got their second song cut. No way. Cut. They just because they were so ripped. We, I ha, now I have to go look at it. Watch it. The uh, first time they were on Sunday Night Live, it was probably it was between ninety five and ninety eight. Uh huh. And they did this. Hey, hey, hey. Look it up, son. Bang, 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 bang. And when they were finished, I just remember going, "I didn't do that again." And they went, <laughs> "No, you're done. You're done for the night. You're out. Show's over." That was live. Let's see this guy. We'll come on back. We're all, all right. Let's place. see what this guy's doing right yeah. here. I mean, this is Jimmy John right here. Jimmy John was on here. Uh, John Lau Tao. He's from uh, Illinois. And he, I love how you do this. The guy who started Jimmy John's. Um, this is really cool. Wait, what? This yeah. is the guy who started Jimmy John's? No, the guy who started Jimmy John's was on here. This guy resembles him very oh, much. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. What's up, Theo? The legend Jim Brewer. What's going on? This is Matt in South Florida. Uh, Jim, I've admired you for God knows how long. Um, You have shared so much of your life throughout uh, your career, especially the stories on the Stern Show. You've left no stone unturned in terms of your transparency. Um, But anybody who knows you knows that you're probably one of the more admirable people in this world. Uh, The care that you gave your father, even um, when he was going through those difficult times, was uh, definitely remarkable to see. What's one piece of advice you would give to somebody who... Um, does have a special relationship with their father or, or parent in general and maybe uh, fears those later years in life, um, you know, knowing that they want to care for him but knowing what's coming next. Um, hopefully we can all meet it as gracefully as you did um, and, and obviously uh, have a special relationship like you did. So thanks for listening, gang gang. Gang bro. Where, we, where, when does this air? It could, it'll probably go up tomorrow but we could do it whenever. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. So, so I won't say the hotel I'm at. Okay. So the hotel I'm at, this just happened last night. I cut my, I have a cut in here and my nail is is slit to here. Mm-hmm. So I call downstairs. I'm like, do you have a nail clipper? And they're like, no, darling, we ain't got one. And Walgreens <laughs> is closed. Um, let me look for like a scissor and cut. And I said, I got to cut you guys. Say, oh, dark. Just come down here. Yeah. Let's take a look. This is the front desk. I'm like, this is why I love the South. Yeah. So come down there, and she's like, you need a pinky condom yeah. till tomorrow, and you go get you. But the, there was another guy, and I don't know if he was a janitor or whatever, because he didn't look like he was checking oh, people he probably, in. He's probably loitering, but yeah. <laughs> I love he's this loitering. guy. He's always there. Yeah. <laughs> he's always there. He's behind it. He gets it. He's worked his way behind oh, yeah, the front yeah, desk yeah. person. Oh, whoever that is, by the Xeroxer? Yeah, 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 he's already worked yeah. his way behind The guy in there who just hears the bell? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> So he he comes and he goes, uh, Jim, same thing. He goes, man, I love, I watched that stuff you did with your dad. He goes, I'm going through this right now. Wow. And the best advice I tell people is the hardest thing we go through in life is watching our parents struggle because they're your rocks. They're your idols. They're your source of, of power. They're your, they're, they're invincible. And his father was only 66 years old, which wow. is still young. And he said he got in a terrible accident, smashed his head. Uh, like it wasn't even his fault. He was what sitting. Was he, doing? He, he was horseback riding. <laughs> yeah. He was uh, in a horseback race. No, he he was sitting. I, I still don't you get know, it. He was in a Civil War reenactment. And it was. <laughs> Let's be honest, okay? He was part of a vote. Ping! <laughs> oh, man, I said not that rifle. That's the real one. Cheddar. Damn. What's wrong with you? 
Sorry, Billy, you all right? He's bleeding bad. Yeah, he's bleeding bad, dad. He's, he's bleeding bad, dad. It's always, I'm going to go out on a limb and say 80% of people in CWRs are father sons, baby. Yeah, you're right. So he goes, um, and I st- there was part of me wanted to ask this question because I, I still, con- all I heard was his father was sitting down mm-hmm. and someone was undoing the hitch on the car or the truck and the hitch smashed his head. And I couldn't visualize, and I wasn't going to deal. I'm like, well, all right, so what happened? He goes, he was, so he's damaged, and he still can't remember. He's he's done. He can't walk. I'm like, whoa, your dad's a fried egg. So he goes, <laughs> and, and he slowly started. I said, you know what the worst part is when you start? Oh, he goes, you know, he's kind of pissing all over. And I went, is he? I go, you know what the toughest thing for me was? The dry heaves. My father dropped a deuce, and I'm like, a huge dry heat. Uh, My neck would hurt from. Uh, uh, is it because it's also your father's excrement? You think? Uh, I mean, hard uh. from. Uh, and you know, but what I realized was the minute they can't drive, I try to explain to this guy. I went, listen, the best thing you could do, taking care of anyone, is you have to remove all selfishness. This is really getting in my way. I ain't got time for this. I'm really bit. This is not a good timing in my life. This is not blah, blah, blah. Because that's what happens. It's really hard to put that aside. Well, my sister should do it. I should do it. Maybe we can hire someone to do it. But they are, they reach a point. You got to understand the last thing you want in life is now I can't drive. Now I can't go to the bathroom myself. And they don't want to let you know. I mean, before this happened, you said your father was driving around. Damn. Well, now he's got a, can you go get me, do you mind just going to get a, a couple things from the grocery store? Uh, he's feeling that um, uh, depression. He knows he's going to die. Um, so you got to put yourself, my fa- I'll never forget, uh, I was coming home from, I, I could, I, my next book is going to be the top 10 cities my father crapped himself in public. I love that. Public. Yeah. I had great stories, but I found the humor in it. Yeah. I mean, you got to laugh at it. And one of the last ones was he. we were uh, just got off the plane. He looked at me. He's like, I got to go. And to me, he said he'd go, which he meant he went. went. Oh. So it was one of them tiny planes. I get him off. I'm dry heaving. I get him into uh, the the United President's Club. Right. I said, I got. I need. I need to get in here, bro. Yeah. I need some. We can't do this. And yeah, this ain't gonna happen. We can't do this in coach. It ain't gonna happen. So we get in there, and I'm dry heaving, and I had an extra pair of sweatpants. And I just remember him looking at me, defeated. Oh. And he said, "You're never gonna bring me around again, are you? You were. We're never gonna travel anymore." And I. It hit me so hard, and I just went, "No, we're gonna travel. It's not gonna feed you." Until we get to where we're going, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I can't feed you. I can't have anything in your system. I'm going to starve you hard. So the, I, I guess Did what he laugh? Yeah, he, he laughed, but he, he wasn't a laugher. He'd just go like this. Hmm. Hmm. That was him laughing. Yeah. That was me crushing with my dad. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the best thing is put your life into there. You don't know what they're where they're at mentally so all you gotta do is constantly cheer i used to get my my dad once he couldn't drive gave up on life wouldn't shower wouldn't wouldn't shave so i'd have to turn on some hank williams and johnny cash and i'd make it a whole i didn't know what a barber shop was so i'd set up like a barber shop in his bathroom and it and i'd be sitting driving him nuts busting his balls i'm like oh, i cut you you're like jesus christ i'm funny Oh my God, Dad! This is bad. I I <laughs> fuck with him like really bad, but we needed that. We needed that scrub his ass. Yeah. Like, ah, I'm like, Dad, you think I like scrubbing your ass? Like, ew! You got shit way up in there. <laughs> Would y'all be in the shower together? No, God, no. No, I could. I couldn't do that. Now I've stepped in with him. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, bro. Teamwork. And I bring that. I like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm like, because when they get older, they can't wipe their ass. Oh yeah, it's so hard it's, now. It's exactly so. It's sit, I'm at that age too. And I'm like, why well, yeah. gotta wipe my ass again? And I go around back a lot of times. Still. I go. I always go around. back. You do? Yeah. Why, oh, wow, why? I just started doing that. What do you mean? Well, well, how I went. Fr- you- I, yeah, I went. Uh, hold the nuts up frontward for a long time. Oh damn! You come this way? <laughs> yeah. Is that oh, crazy? 
wow, I never went that many in my life. Really? Yeah, because oh, I don't want them my nut. No. Not when you just I stop went, before you're nuts. Oh, that's yeah, crazy. Out that way as much as possible. But that's such a six-year-old move still doing it that way, <laughs> I feel like. And I have a big butt, so to go around my butt is tougher. Wait, and I have short arms, big butt. Wait a minute. So you coming up here. What if you I'll miss? I go front, yeah. It's all, then you no, gotta, you don't miss. I mean, you're. it's really... You kind of scoot up on the bowl. I think it's oh, hell it's no. really practical to me, oh, honestly. Hell. Look, you know, uh, we recently got the website done, and the fella that did it, fella I grew up with, named Timmy, beautiful guy, beautiful slender fella, about six foot, six one, probably six one, maybe six one and a half. But anyway, he has a company called Modify, and they do websitery. They're good people over there. Our website is looking better than ever. It was effortless, quick, like magic. Modify now has the last website plan. It's the best option out there for any business that doesn't want to do it themselves. You can't do the HTML and drag and drop and this and that. Next thing you know, you, you'll you be back to the business card. Modify's last website plan really seems to be too good to be true, but it's not. No cost to build, no contract, unlimited updates, unlimited support, custom design, easy editing tools, future redesigns, all of that. All of that for just $249 a month. The best part is they do it all for you. To learn more about the last website you'll ever need, visit modify.com slash Theo to schedule your free demo today. That's modify with a P-H, M-O-D-I-P-H-Y dot com slash T-H-E-O. These guys don't F around, gang. Bible, 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 Bible. In case you don't speak Espanol, in case you don't speak El Chino, Chinese, that means Chinese. I just learned it from Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. One of my goals for the new year was to learn a new language. And Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L, has made the whole process addictively fun and easy with bite-sized lessons you can use in the real world. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. They do that. Unlike the infamous language classes you took in high school where people are smoking dope, stabbing each other. Vato, vato, eh, huh? In mes tortin, papa. When's lunch? Babbel. You can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. German. Ooh, look at the gerals. Beautiful gerals. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months. That's six total months, man. That's almost a baby. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use promo code T-H-E-O. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com, code Theo, for an extra three months free. Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com, code Theo. Babbel, language for life. Learn the language you want to learn, man. It's time. It's time. You know, my dad was 70 when I was born. My dad was really old, and he was he was an older man. So just hear you your talk about stories 70. about your dad. Yeah, he was. my dad was born in 1910, right? What? Crazy, bro. Crazy. My first jokes were all about growing up with, like, an old dad and, like. Oh, my gosh. See, I thought mine, mine was 23. Yeah. 1923. Wow. 1923. 1910. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy, man. But it's just interesting, like, like, um, I think just the things, like, I would get, I felt, I feel bad as I got older. I was embarrassed of my dad a lot. Just, like, the way his skin would look. Like, just yeah. little things, like, right. he'd right. fall asleep at the game. <laughs> like, he'd fall asleep. Dude, my dad bought a car off of some black guys in our neighborhood, and so he had this car that had these 22s in it, this Delta Cutlass 88 or something, but it had these 22 speakers in the back of it, right? Yeah. So he'd be listening to, like, Paul Harvey, like, you know, like, yeah. Paul Harvey, good day, just at the fucking loudest bass you could have, just dead asleep in the fucking carpool line, bro. <laughs> We'd have to walk down to the car to get in, and the teacher knew we were so embarrassed, dude, and it was just <coughs> this fucking... Sometimes we would make him drive and walk down the block and then get in, like, I don't know. Sometimes I still have, like, this weird shame from, like, just... I just wasn't in a space to be loving. I was just, like, a, like a kid, kid, you know? You didn't know? Yeah. I didn't know my dad World War II and all that. Like, I didn't... He would say it to me. He's like, I'm in a big one. Well, like, eight and nine. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. And even when you learn in school, you don't you don't comprehend. 
And he'd watch the war things. Like, I, I'm not comprehending what's going on. You have to get older. That's another thing about just, like, the big picture of life. Like, that's one thing I feel bad when people die young because you just don't get to see, like, how it all kind of adds up and it, it all the balance sheet all averages out. Yeah, and sometimes I wonder, at least this is the only way it works in my mind, where if someone died, I've had people in my life die young, and it's actually empowered a certain amount of people their their spirit right empower like it, it happened for me like it really uh empowered me in a lot of ways a, a dear friend of mine um what happened to him who was he she died it was a she mm -hmm. and we were we were best friends it was florida it was before i went full blown into stand up and she kept saying you need to do stand up and she liked me but i didn't realize she really liked me mm. and we lived right next door to each other but we it was a i had the i was lost in florida i mean i grew up in long island and we grew up like brothers and sisters on the same street our whole lives and and we were a bro, we were brothers and sisters and and even when Phil's dad's tape broke out, we were like, now we're playing Truth or Dare. It's just yeah. like, we, we were, <clears throat> and then my parents were like, we just bought a house in Florida. What? And then I go down there and people talk different and there's no, I'm like, well, you just stripped me my life. Um, so she was kind of a saving grace. She was from Boston. And uh, and I, it, it was, it was, it was, uh, she was, she was, we were st we were bickering over so something happened. I won't go into details. And then, uh, long story short, I saw her one night. I actually I was like, God, man, I if there's an opportunity to talk to her, I, I don't like this feeling. I want to talk to her. And sure enough, after about two and a half weeks, she was sitting in a breezeway as I pulled in late at night and went over and I'm like, Hey, I'm sorry. I you know, I miss you. I love you. And we talked for hours. And she basically told me like it was all her things were closed and she's like you know i couldn't go to the prom and now I, I was on the beach and i met this guy from boston that i went to school with and he just moved down here and he asked me the prom and like, oh my god it's amazing and i gave her this kiss and next day she's, she's like tomorrow i got photography class you want to go and i didn't want to go um yeah so i purposely was like a little late mm -hmm. so i can be like hey man and i got home she died in a car crash mm. but that it was weird it was uh and that was the beginning of w when i went to the funeral it was very you know she was she was a senior in How school old were you were you a senior in high school i'm 19 19 mm -hmm. and so she i remember being at the funeral and going wow this is this is not the way this is weird so i went outside with a couple of friends so like this is not what she would want right now she wants me to do comedy she wanted blah blah, blah. and i started I started making everyone laugh and started imitating what you'd be saying to us right now and what mm. we would be doing. And everyone started laughing. And then I stopped and went, oh, this is not cool because now everyone's coming outside and oh, this ain't cool. This right. ain't cool. And they went, no, 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 don't stop. Keep going. And then it was weird. Uh, That's powerful because it, somebody's gone big, and you're there's this, pow there's this power of like of being like a valve release in a weird way. It was, and then I, I stopped at her grave before, and I would talk to her all the time. I'd have, I don't even smoke, but she'd smoke, and I'd have a cigarette. Just started. I went to her grave before we left. I'm like, hey man, I didn't realize how much you loved because her mom gave me these poems she wrote oh. about me. I was like, oh wow, and one of them was like, uh, uh, if I can't have him, I'd rather just not be here, and I can love him from a deeper place. I'm like, mm. oh wow, damn. So I went to a, I went to the grave and I went, hey, hey Kirsten, I just want to, uh, Kristen, I want to tell you, look out for me, do your best. I'm not sure I'll ever meet anyone that loved me the way you loved me. And I know I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to be a star. I pray to God I meet a girl before that because I want her to fall in love with me and not the star. Mm. I go, I, I know you're going to be looking after me and blah, blah, blah. And it was also weird stuff at, at her, uh, the day of the funeral, we went back to the house, everyone's crying and stuff. And I went outside and I was like, I can't believe, I, I, I hope you're okay. And I looked up, dude, it was this, it was clear as day. It was a freaking rainbow in a circle directly above her house. 
So I went in. I put, I'm like, you guys got to look at it. And we all look. It was it was just wacky moment. Now, of course, other people are like, well, yeah, because on those particular days, right. there's particles. And that's why in the science set. Like, oh, all right, don't kill my moment. Yeah. For you, it's that. For me, it's something else. Yeah, for me, it's a little bit of magic. It's a fucking loose Care Bear out there, bro. It, I don't know. I don't know. It's for me, it's something else, bro. Take it easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not shoving on you. I'm just yeah. telling you how I felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving you a book and going, shut it right here. Don't kill my magic, yeah. dude. Right, right, right. A lot of people want to kill your fucking magic. They want to kill the magic. Because they got none. They got none. Bro, I'll tell you what, dude. dude. It was so scary when young people died, man. Well... Now, I forgot where we were going with this. No, go, go on. I interrupted you. Though. No, no, no. Well, what, what the hell was I even talking about? Why was I saying this? I don't know, bro. You were talking about... <laughs> was she your first kiss, you think, that girl? No, I didn't kiss her. You didn't? Never kissed. Wow, just friends, huh? That's we're, beautiful. We were deep friends. And, uh, oh, powerful on the other side. I, I don't even know where I was going, but I'll tell you, I, it's perception. You know, when my dad died, that was the toughest uh, loss for me. And after he died, yeah, I'm sitting, this is crazy. This is, and these are stories like I was afraid to tell, but I was like, you know what? It happened. What am I? I'm in my living room. I'm, would, would you, would you, you know, those cries when you're like, uh, your mouth is open. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like primordial. Yeah. It's pri I call it the primal cry. So, uh, and um, I'm, you know, I pray, I'm like, God, you know what? What happens? I don't know what happens. You know, my wife thinks you'll see Jesus or whatever. I don't know. Who the hell knows? So I'm just asking, like, do you feel it? Like, do you, is it an energy? Do we become a, a, a plant? Like, what? What? Ha or just is it nothingness? Are we in space? Are we a thought? Like, what happens? Yeah. And I'm going. I wish I could just feel his energy, dude. I just, I, on my kids' lives, hope they die from lying. I start here, and, it, and, it, and it's nonstop. And I look in the, and there's this freaking bird. Flying into the windows, he's like, and he's, he's going like this, he's bink, and, he's, and I'm looking at him. And he looked like your dad. <laughs> he looked exact, and I, but I sit there and I'm going, like, Dad, like, is this, like, what's going, on? dude? So I talk myself out of it. This is too weird. This is crazy. Every time I walk away, thing we do it again. This this bird. For a year and a half, every day would start in the room where my dad died, right? And then he'd go around the house and go to that same window every day. Mm -hmm. It was a cardinal. <laughs> now people, now people are like you know, a cardinal yeah, is an angel to, yeah. and uh, the reverse blah, blah, blah. migration pattern. They do, yeah. And, and the, but then you got my father-in-law. He's like, Jesus Christ! It's a male bird. He sees his reflection. He's trying to kill it. It's not your father. You die. We go in the grave. It's over. I'm like, ah, don't kill it, man. Don't kill it. So now this thing becomes a joke. It really becomes a joke because, um, you know, the kids would start talking to him. Grandpa. Yeah, grandpa's here. It's weekend. You can't be knocking on the window at 630 in the morning. I want to sleep on the weekend. Not cool. Yeah. And then this is, but this is the weird part. This is weird. This thing lasted. It showed up in October. Made a whole year through October. All the way the following March, it's still going. My wife and I and the kids, we go to Turks and Caicos. And we go there for vacation. We're Damn. Sitting, you and got I'm, a little bit of money. I, uh, no, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I've done it right. Yeah. I've done it right. Um, I've done it right. So all my money is, is it's not in my bank. It's in my kids' heads right. from private schools. And it's in Africa and oh, Australia. Yeah. And believe it's all over the place. Yeah, it's underwater scuba diving, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whale sharks. <laughs> it's everywhere. They're like, Dad, we're broken. You show them a picture of them on fucking Kilimanjaro base camp. You're There's like, another hundred k. That that zebra was worth every hundred k cost. <laughs> so so. Yeah, that D minus my kid gets in private school. That's my house on the beach right there. Bang. <laughs> um, <laughs> so with the which is why Jim Brew is on the comedy club tour. Yeah, I wasn't thinking long term. No salary for a year. <laughs> How much money we got left? Oh my God! Start parking comedy clubs. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
How much for a show? Uh, Two dollars. Book it. <laughs> um, Fucking S- Schneider just did fourteen shows here last week. I saw that. That's crazy. I saw. Oh, so let me finish, and I want to talk okay. about Schneider. Turks and Caicos, Primal Cry. Eh. Bro, I on my kids' lives. This is weird. I I go. You know what? And I'm on, I talk just like that. I went. You know what? I've been holding on to you too long. This is this is wrong for me to hold on to you. This is what not, I'm letting you go. I'm so sorry that I've been crying like this. I'm so sorry. I'm always sad when I think of you. From now on, I'm just I'm gonna laugh my ass off. I'm gonna think of you because he was funny. My dad was dark, funny, and sexually everything was a sex joke. Yeah, everything. Oh yeah, nonstop. You know, we my mom would try to go to uh, yeah. if we go to a wedding, which he hated. Yeah, hated church. So the mid the priest was like, "Come on, man!" He's like, "Yeah, with no pants on." <laughs> Jim, for Christ's sake, he's an asshole. If I wear his stupid hat, man, what the fuck, guy? He, he just wants your money, this asshole. <laughs> he was. He just wants some money and some kid titty, you know. He's just <laughs> throwing him under the bus, yeah, bro. Yeah. I would bring him by SNL, and he. You want to talk about embarrassment? You want to talk about embarrassment? <laughs> I'm surprised Paul Abdul hasn't come out of the woodwork and try to sue me because of my dad's actions. I will never forget. Never forget. My dad, once he got comes up, Paul Abdul sitting on his lap, and he turns around, and he's going, he's looking at me, he's like, can you handle this? Yeah. Can you handle that? Like, yeah, I can handle She's like, I love him. He goes, you want to play puppy? And I went, dad, no. No. Not the puppy. And what is it? And she's like, what's the puppy? I'm like, no, 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 please, not cool. You got to remember he's 80-something years old. She's like, no, I want to hear it. He goes, that's when I sniff your ass and you just growl. (laughs) I went, oh, my God. And she laughed her ass. So just to to let you know. Yeah, he was a wild guy. He was in the jungle for three years, killing a big guilt. Yeah, I'd smell anybody's ass. If I'm in the jungle for fucking three years, dude. If my car breaks down for an hour, I'll fucking smell somebody's ass. You just growl? (laughs) 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 That's old school, man. I used to have cocaine to do that. But the military, I think, was cocaine just into a lot of people's systems. It was just this, you know, when they went through some real wars, it just made whatever. Like, let's just do whatever, you know? know, My dad would always say World War II. I said, what was, because he would not talk about whatsoever. And whenever I really pry him, he'd go, thank God for the hillbillies. Like, why? Because they knew how to make alcohol out of anything. <laughs> anything. They make alcohol out of anything. I'd give them a foot and they knew how to make alcohol out of it. Yeah. Really? And you just don't even think about things like that. Like, someone, one of these rednecks knows how to make booze. Yeah. Hey, get me four leaves and a coconut. We're going to be hammered on Thursday. We're going to get through this. <laughs> um, so I let him go. All right? And so you really had almost like a... Like I'm letting his spirit. I'm letting go. you go. I'm, I'm letting, letting your spirit go. Held on too too long. Yeah. Okay. And so now I'm testing myself. I'm looking at old people because if I saw someone in a wheelchair, oh, I'd start sobbing. Hard. Yeah. If I saw if I saw old people, like, oh, God. so now I'm purposely looking for old people, and I'm okay. Now I'm starting to to laugh, I, I, and I, it's it's working. So we go home, and we're unpacking the car. And my father, I swear to God, dude, I'm, I, I have nothing to sell here. I'm just telling you what happened. We go in the house, and my father-in-law goes, hey, uh, you know, the kitty litter's done, feather cast. He goes, but that, the bird's gone. Everyone knew the bird. The bird's gone. Gooey me's gone. I don't know, in the middle of the week, he just stopped coming around. And I, I sat down like this, and I started laughing. He goes, what's so funny? I went, you don't understand. I I let my dad go. You don't think that's weird that this bird every day showed up when I asked? And he goes, oh, for Christ's sake, it (laughs) migrates. Jesus Christ, Jimmy. What the hell is wrong with you? My daughter's getting into you. Stop with that shit. No God, no G, we just die and a bird comes and goes. It had nothing to do with your father. But that's the power of its its perception. It's uh right. it's not to be debated. That's my that's why I think a lot of people start losing They're like, Oh, it's supposed to be you know, and even my wife will go, Well, it's not hey, 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 don't don't. 
I don't care what it says here. I mean, right. I care and all that, but I'm just telling you what I did and this happened. That's my own thought, my own feeling. Yeah, the magic. Sometimes it's it's easy for people to kill the magic, man. It's easy for all the, the words and the literature and all the extra information. I got a story. For, is, are we talking to this guy? Um, what is Am this I guy too doing? long, man? Am I boring No, you're you good, now? man. I'll tell you a story, Jim. So I'm down in Orange County, and they used to have a church there, and they ended up stealing a lot of people's money and whatever but no. before that yeah but before that <laughs> no it's crazy dude i knew when the fucking when the guy came out in like six robes on a fucking like golden thing and bro i remember i went to their church service once they had real camels uh real you know they had real like illegal aliens they had real slaves at the manger like this i'm like this is a lot you know what i'm saying like they had to we're go. gonna crush it this christmas <laughs> eve hard and we're gonna charge admission yeah. oh they did and like, we're gonna ump it up do you know how hard it was to get these camels <laughs> Dude, and one of the camels defecated on the steps, bro, and people had to go up and down it the whole night to get on the stage. So anyway, they busted this church, but one day, one day I'm over there. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm trying to be quiet because- Crystal Cathedral, bring it up, will you? Well, you this do is something, why- Sean, Sean's almost fired. The reason why I'm laughing is my wife goes to this church. Uh-huh. And they did the same thing three years ago to feed camel. And this church is small. Oh, it's not a big yeah, church. bad idea. And this thing dropped a deuce yeah. right on a camel. <laughs> it's sheep- yeah, you can't camel a, a small church. Here's Crystal Cathedral right here, and this is in uh, Orange, California. And the the walls would open up. Oh, that's up. big. Oh, this thing was huge. And so, yeah, so in the back there, that's all glass. And then on the right, if you know, go back to that picture if you don't mind, Sean. Nope, right there. If we can zoom in on that or get it bigger. Yeah, so on the right there where it's kind of open, that's actually the wall opens up. And, uh, wow. And, yeah, the walls open like that. It's just oh, the way wow. it's built. I mean, it was a nice... It was All an for the name place. of homeless people. That's the man right there, Robert. Oh somebody. yeah, he's famous. Bobby Schuller, yeah, and his daughter I think might have been a lesbian, but beautiful, bro, and really talented. I thought, but um, anyway, so I'm sitting there. There's this lady sitting next to me. The the doors open up. A butterfly comes in, right? Comes in, lands on this woman's cheek. She's probably about 85, maybe. Lands on her cheek. Thick makeup, right? Can't move, you know. <laughs> and I'm sitting right next to her. And I'd already been kind of just chatting with her. You know, it's church. You know, it's sure. really right. You should, yeah. You say hey, or yeah, especially yeah. if you see an older person. You, you know? look fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you look great. Yeah. It's oh, amazing. you're only 85. You know. Wow. You look. You look. You look 79. You look so, 78. So pleased I met you. Yeah. 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 So yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh wow. You have soft hands. You. Oh, you seem like you're gonna die soon. Things like that. You know, just things that go through your head. You got a good three months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna go be a good three months. Yeah. You're gonna do fine. She goes. I said, "Oh, ma'am." I said, "There's a butterfly on your cheek," you know, and she goes, "Oh, that's my son. He died in a car accident uh, six years ago uh, today, and every year today he comes and visits me at church." And I was like, "It blew my mind, bro. I'm not even. I got to go look through my phone. I took pictures. Of me sitting there like this, like." And I would just, it blew my mind. Like she was not concerned and it stayed there the whole service and then jetted out, you know? And I don't think that that's like Elon Musk, you know, doing early trial shit. I, think, <laughs> I believe yeah. that that's something. Like, I do too. It's just a piece of energy that was just wanted to spend it, time with her. Listen, there there is energy. I, I think about this sometimes. Like me and you, if we have a chemistry and we're talking, there's an energy there. Yeah. There's an energy. Yeah. Where's the energy come from? Does it come from somewhere higher? Is it, do we create it? it? No one knows. Science can't create all that stuff. You know, here's a, here's a, um, I remember you talking about seeing the long term, something that just taught me the long term. I have a, um, you know, my mom's side of the family, it's four different men, and we don't know who the one, my one sister's dad ever was. And she, just, mom, she dated, she dated met a lot of men. Yeah, she started, my parents are different. My dad, zero. I mean, he would tell me, he's like, wow, we used to have a lot of turtle soup and possum pie. And yeah. I thought he was kidding. And then I realized he wasn't. Yeah, wow. When I see all the brewers together, they're like, remember Paul would make you go along the tracks, Jim? And if you didn't come with the right amount of buckets, now he's five, granted, and he just whoop your ass. We felt so bad. You didn't get bread that night. Real rural. I, and I'm like, 
what? Come on, that didn't real. Now she meet. Now he he ends up with my mom, who grew up in Greenwich Village. Oh, fancy, B- big fancy. But then her world came crashing down. She lost her dad. She lost her husband. While she had a kid, and the day and the mom kicked her out. She must have. So she spiraled out of control. Abusive, horrible relationships. Like my oh. st- my step my step family side. Horrifying, just horrifying where i came along I'm like i my life kicks ass yeah um and so <laughs> it did it freaking kicked i didn't know any of that we were blue collar but we still it was just amazing um so damn where's that going with this man see what happens when you start if you can well, i started talking about that lady landed the butterfly landed on the lady's cheek at the thing yeah and then yeah. you oh oh i, I know what i was gonna say so the long term we were yeah, talking about before because you don't know the long plans or the grace in life this is another crazy story let's do it so my nephew my nephew had a tough run mm-hmm. the black a mixed or what was he uh no dad dad left he was a heroin mm-hmm. addict Oof. um and my sister my sister Hero god rest her you. soul she died uh 59 couple same year my dad died um but she was a great soul but Never got over the trauma. So she was of on, your father, of just her life, of her life, wow. of what her dad did to her. Mm. So this is she was on the freight train, you know, whoo, whoo, ah, whatever yeah. she wants. You're just trying to kill the pain. Oh, bang, hit the. But her kids, her one son, I went. He's gonna either be dead, or he's gonna be in prison. And she'd always say like Jimbo, he looks up to you like a. But I, I was I was ten years old in him. Like I can't. And, and when I went after my dream, we were living in Florida. I was petrified to leave him. Your I, nephew? Yeah, because I knew. I was 22, he was 12. And what's his name, Ronnie or something? Steve-O. Steve-O, yeah, good. And I went, <clears throat> He's you saw it coming. Cops started coming. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's when, uh, he's broken in some places, spray painted up. Listen and, to Nelly. Anger. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, I feel you, bro. Yeah, the pants are down. Yeah. He's he's going there. Yeah. He's going there. Sure enough, um off to the off to the off to camp. Yeah. Right? The bad camp. The Saint the Saint local. This yeah. is state. Oh wow. So he'd write me while I was on SNL and I was shocked he was still alive. And I'd send him a little stuff of hope, blah 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 blah. Time for him to get out. Now I'm in in New Jersey. Got a beautiful home. My wife's pregnant. Two kids, and we start going. He's he can't go back home. He go, he's gonna go right back in. It's gonna get worse at home. He can't go back to his environment. So he's got to come here. He's got to come. He's yeah, his only chance. Let's do it. So dude. we bring him here. And you were talking about a movie. Yeah. So he comes. I'll never forget the first thing he does. Right? He gets. A, I sent a car to pick him up. Oh. oh. Bad news, bro. Bad <laughs> I said a car to figure out the car picks. He gets out of the car. He's got a wife beater. He's six foot four. I saw him as a little pudgy teenager. Wow. And he's inked on one side of his body. He gets out of the car <laughs> and he squats. He's like, what's up, Uncle Jim? And he lights a cigarette and he's squatting on the curb like yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> And my wife and I looked at it and said, like, ah, oh, maybe this is a bad decision. <laughs> so long story short. It becomes the greatest story of our lives. It it, it it was a lot of a lot of trial and error, a lot of problems, a lot of time. But we we realized we had a lot of work to do with him. Was it hard to love him? Was it hard to love him through all the mistakes and stuff? No, for us it was easy because all I did was I kept reminding him, like, listen to me. You don't understand. Nobody want like I had such backlash. You can't do this. You have kids. And and rightfully so. I didn't tell anyone in the neighborhood. I just told my family, and they were full blown. You can't do this. Yeah. Not now. I said, you don't understand. He's gonna be dead. It's like you know what? That's not your problem. Yeah. You got everything going for you. That's mom's problem. Yeah. And my wife and I are like, I don't know, man. I did. so we had him there. And the thing that broke him was, so I'd say, like, listen, you don't understand. All I get out of this is that you become a good person and you're able to do your own thing. I go, if if once I'm gone, you're screwed. 
you, you need to learn just just basic life. And it, that was through some things he was going through. He was still hanging out with a yo-yo, and he he started getting, he got pulled over, and he was like, oh, they caught me. I'm like, oh, my God. Ugh. Of course they caught you because your hat's backwards, yeah. getting high through an area that nobody under a million dollars lives, yeah. and the cops got nothing to do. Like, look at this son of a bitch with tinted <laughs> windows. What? You don't live here, dude. You want to step out of the car? It, that happened to me when I first moved it's the there. Same. It happens to everybody. Of course. So... That's Long normal. Story short, the kids broke him. I'll never forget. This oh, is the, that's cute. This is like a movie, man. And I always said I'd write it, but I'm like, all right. It would be a good movie. It would be. He's sitting at the kitchen table. And you got to see him. He's redneck as hell. Funny as shit. Funny. Funny. No, we'll only vacation with Uncle Steve-O and his wife and children now. Yeah, that's a, we don't want to vacation whenever we're up. He, we lo- they were so much love. He's sitting there one day, this big tough, and he starts crying. At the kitchen table. Like, what's what's amazing? I ain't never had this. Like, I had what? This. What, omelets? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never had an omelet. <gasps> Bro, let me tell you something. I'm just joking. No, no, no. But the, the fact you say that, he, after three weeks, is like, I want to make you a meal. <laughs> Swear oh. to God. He made a prison meal. He said, I need, he need, he said, I need cheese, cheese dip, cheese nips. The, yeah, 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 cheese nips, the square cheese nips. Yeah. yeah. He needed them. Yeah. He needed cheese doodles, <laughs> uh, noodles, and he would explain. He's like, this was like, it would take months to get to these get products. This, this is a wedding cake in This here. was <laughs> huge in the penitentiary. Yeah. And it was, we had three bites. One. <laughs> <laughs> but I just... You know, we're looking at each other like, let him live this. This is this is a big. It's like the cat bringing a dead animal. Yeah. This is for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love how you just spread the guts out. That was very kind to you. <laughs> Meow to you too. Love you too. Yeah. Thank you. So he and 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 he goes just this, and he st- he started crying. And then the oldest daughter was five at the time, mm. and she she's like, we love you, Uncle Steve. And the t- t- kids just melted him. So. Life goes on. He becomes an amazing human being. Gets married. Meets an amazing woman. Have a child. Life is great. Suburbs. Blah, blah, blah. Now, recently, uh, his father died. And whenever something goes on, his wife's like, you got to come. He's going through something. You got to talk to him. Because I was the closest thing. I, I see him as like a brother. He sees me differently. But it's 10 years. Whatever. So I go over the house. His father died. Now, he, mm. ne- he didn't have a relationship with his father. His father tried to come back, but he was too Jesus. He didn't want to hang yeah. out, have coffee. He was like, you got to find Jesus. He was like, stop doing that to me. Just if you want to be dad, be dad. Don't, I don't right. want, stop putting this in my face. He was showing me the cards. Like, lose card. Doesn't ask about my daughter. Doesn't mess my life. It's just, do, do, find Jesus. Like, dude, I can't. I can't. And he, and he kept getting hurt, going back and blah, blah, blah. So he had bad feelings because it ended. He didn't have closure. Mm. His father died during COVID. He had hepatitis C. Blah, blah. So I'm going over there, dude. I pull over and I go, what do you, what do you want me to say to him? I got, I got to say something because this kid's going to be in turmoil. And you're just asking God? Yeah. I said, I, I said, what do you want me to say to him? I, dude, it went boom. I went, holy crap. I, I have a relationship where I laugh. I go, Bro, <laughs> you are, dude. I think if I'm God, I would talk to you a pretty good bit, I think. I'm I mean, like, man, me. this is a cool, holy crap. I didn't see that. So I go in there and I go, listen, I know how you feel. And we did small talking. I know how you feel about your dad. All right. We don't know. What, let, me exp- let me back up and tell you a quick story. So I tell him the story I'm about to tell you. I go, years ago, when I was a little boy, I was about 10 years old. Dad brought me to go see uh, <clears throat> mom and dad. We go see Johnny Cash. Get to see him a couple times. We go to Ohio um, to visit this couple. And um, there was this guy I met, and he said, can I hang out with him for the day? I want to teach him how to, how to fish and blah, 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 and shoot a gun. And my parents were cool. I never shot a gun. I was scared to death. I think I killed a bird. He set up a can, <laughs> shot a bird. And this is a stranger man you didn't know? Him? Well, we're going to get to that. Okay. And so he then took me fishing. We were driving. I'll never forget. He's playing the stones. He looks at me 
And he goes, you like this? I went, yeah, who is this? He goes, it's Satisfaction. It's the Stones. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. He's like, you don't know the Stones. He couldn't comprehend I didn't know the Rolling Stones. That happened to me at 19. I didn't know him. Wow. But and I had this the same my kids. My kids don't know <laughs> good fellas. And like, what? Yeah. So long story short, we come home the day before we go. We're like, can I show, can I show Jimbo this album? And he he goes, it's a comedy album, stand-up comedian. This guy named Steve Martin. And he 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 shows me the album, and it's Steve Martin, Let's Get Small. And he's got a fake, you know, the fake nose and glasses and a balloon wrapped around his head. So I'm instantly attracted because I'm in 10th grade, just doofy. He puts it on, and I was blown out of my mind that a guy could could just he's telling jokes. And he, and he made a record, and he's in front of people. I never saw this before. I saw Lauren Hardy, and I saw her laughing. I saw these TV shows, but I never saw this. This. I saw like people doing characters, and I'm listening. I was blown at him, and I listened to it nonstop. I still know the album from beginning to end. Steve Martin, Let's Get Small. I'm a rambling man. Ramble, rambling man. I, I do the whole album. Changed my life. It made me go into comedy and go dip more into it than Richard Pryor and then Don Rickles and George Carlin and boom, I was off to the races. I go and that led to the life that I've I, that led me to my journey. Right, right, yeah. So and that some journey, sort of seed, there was a little seed led yeah. me to uh, having a house and taking you in, having the opportunity to take you in. I never saw that guy much after that. I go, but how great now? Look at where your life is at because I was able to give that to you, your daughter and your wife. I go, that guy was your father. I go, so before you go, I hate him the rest of life. We don't know what the plan was. If he didn't do that for me, and I hated him for leaving my sister, but look at where we're at now. Wow. But that's... You have to be able to see that. So that was your sister's father? That was my sister's husband. Oh, that this was, was his Steve father. This was Steve-O's father. Wow. So if he if that guy didn't give you that album, then maybe you don't end up on the track you're on. Absolutely not. Man, that's powerful, man. My, one of my and that's a heroin addict. That's what he was? The dad was a heroin addict? He left. He was a heroin addict. He was a drug addict. Oh, he yeah. might have been, had some mob ties because my sister loved talking about that. Well, it's funny. It's interesting about laughter, man. It's like... Sometimes somebody, even if they can't maybe make you laugh themselves or whatever, they want to just share something with you that maybe that makes them feel good, you know? It yeah. happened to me with Jerry Clower, a man, my best friend, his dad, this is in Mississippi, they lived, and and he said to me one day, he said, man, you have to listen to this, and he put it on in the car, and it was this guy, Jerry Clower from Yazoo City, Mississippi, and he's uh, he was a famous comedian for a long time, Yeah, and, and he ended up doing being a preacher at the end of his life, and then he passed away, but he told these stories, and I just had never you know he he said he always said he didn't do jokes he said I, it's stories made funny or I tell stories funny that's what he said I tell stories funny that's that's right but man he was but if, ever since his that dad gave guy. me that I would have never yeah right nothing never my mind that was the game changer and and it, and it didn't even change my life then I mean it, it helped then me get into comedy but I didn't come back to Jerry Clower till about maybe four years ago and that even changed my comedy perception and career the way I perform and the way that I want to reach people and yeah, man. It's wild, right? It's a wild ride. It's, it's a good interesting ride. how one little thing can... <clears throat> yeah. It's about how do you... Yeah, what, where do those seeds... How do you find that seed? A lot of times, somebody needs to show it to you by hand, too, whatever it is. Like, advertisements help, and the computer helps, and that sort of thing, but... If you can lead somebody, like you take somebody to a hockey game, then you're like, holy shit, now I love hockey. You know, like That's what happened to me. Somebody has to take you. Somebody yes. Has, you, you almost need a, a Sherpa. You need that. You that, need that little, yeah. that little push, whatever. And I would see that. I'd be on the road. And, and I remember the first time going on the road. It was a little spooky, a little exciting. But I was young. And I remember just little moments where – you think it's something or you, you might. And I just remember, you know, I, I, my first road gig was Cincinnati, Ohio. And Who'd you and, open for? Do you remember? Uh, or was this when you were headlining? No, I was the opener. It was Ray Combs Club in Cincinnati. And all I remember is I was so excited because the headliner just won. Star Search? Yes. Wow. The $100,000. He won wow. it. Wow. Oh my God! What was his name? 
Fuck. That was the show, though, wasn't it? At a certain point, uh, it was. But yeah, I don't even know even why I brought him up. But. Dude, I'll tell you a story. So the f- so I met you once before, and this was in. So I was on a show called Road Rules, right? It was like a reality television show. Do you remember a show like? Kind of remember that people playing games and stuff, and they used to have a show called Real Worlds and. People it was MTV. Was, it was MTV. Yeah. So I this remember is, Road Rules. This is nineteen. This is two thousand and two. Wow, so this is in my half-baked touring bus, full-blown, yeah, I mean, hot, I mean, yeah, it was. hardcore, fat, I was fat. I don't, I, you know what, I, actually, now that you say it, you had a perfect look of a stoner, like you really had a perfect stoner look, oh. but here's what happened, so I'm waiting outside, I'm in Florida, I'm waiting outside for my girlfriend, she's coming, she's flying in to visit me, right, we have a couple day break, and we're in Fort Lauderdale. And they put us up at a decent hotel, and we're excited. And I'm 22 or something on him. I'm on him, gonna be on him. I'm doing fine, you know. I'm excited. I'm also a weirdo, but I'm I'm cool. I'm waiting outside for my girlfriend, and you come walking up. Right? It's night. It's midnight. She got in on the last flight on Southwest. And I'm and like, where is this? This, this is, is in Fort Lauderdale. But where? At a hotel. Okay. That's all I remember. Okay. And it had one of those elevators inside where there was like you could see, you could see out of the elevator when you're going up, so you okay. can see the lobby and stuff. You know, really, okay. really cool. All right. So you come walking up, and I'm like, "Holy shit, you're Jim Brewer!" And you're like, "Yeah, man." And uh, I was, he's like, "What's going on?" I was like, "Oh, nothing. I'm here. I'm working on this MTV show. It's called Road Rules." And you're like, "Oh, I know that show." It's like you're like, "What are you guys doing? Just running around hitting elephants in the nuts, right?" That's what you said. Right? <laughs> Which was so crazy. That is something I used to say all the time. Did you really? I don't know why, yes. Well, here's the crazy part. Then, in sandals, you proceeded to act out hitting an elephant. <laughs> yes. You would jump up and act like you were hitting an elephant in the nuts. Dude, it, it floored me. It fucking floored me. And nobody else was around, so there was nobody that could believe this. And you didn't have camera phones. And so, I'm like, I'm just waiting for my girlfriend. You're like, you want to come upstairs and smoke, man? And I was like, holy shit, dude. I just got invited to go smoke. And... But if if she if she would have got there, our relationship was it. If I was high, it would have been. <laughs> would have been a mess. Oh, that a I mess. think I remember because I remember acting out the you, whole doing elephant noise, bro. You did it like six or seven times, and it was just the <laughs> first time it was good. It, oh yes, and try to reach and hit it. Yeah, <laughs> and in sandals, it was just like, <laughs> how is this guy even trying this? Bro, and it was so oh crazy God. to me. This is before I was a comedian or even got into comedy. But and that's was. why I love. Once I was out of it, I love. I did. That was the me. I loved everyone. I was suppressed. I I felt suppressed of those years of just not trusting anyone. Everyone yeah. was out to get you in the back. Everyone was talking behind your back. Everyone was trying to get your fire. Oh, I was. It was. It was hard. It was the worst. And Would the, you feel like you're a trusting person? Me? Yeah. V- very. Probably too much. Right. Yeah, it's just interesting, I yeah. trust everyone right out of the bat, right, right out of the gate, because there's no reason not to. Um, but I, I literally go off the energy, and I really look into the eyes. And if I feel you're just slightly off, like no, nah, I know when they I right, just not today, yeah, not, not today, today, bro, dude. Yeah. I trust you. What, how long I've been on here? I don't know, maybe two hours. And I went deep. I went. I went far. Yeah, I was. I was up to here. <laughs> Wow, I'm going here, huh? <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> We're hitting what? elephant nuts. Yeah. <laughs> it was so crazy, man. It just, wow, that was I... such a moment. And it's so funny. I didn't know, uh, like, I didn't know that, you know, we'd be sitting here now. But yeah, that was such a, like, it was just so crazy. You were so funny, man. I also... Wasn't it such a fun thing being funny when you were young? Were you funny when you were young? Like, oh, were you funny was... in high school with your buddies and stuff? I was, I was, dude, that was the fun. To me, there's no other like, you can do specials and like do theaters and do like, <laughs> but man, being funny with your fucking buddies in a group when nobody will ever be able to replicate the moment and you're just like sewing this fucking tapestry that's just retarding. You don't even know you have needles in your hands and you're just, oh God, it I love the that. greatest high that. and gift of life. Yeah. And I, I. High school was the best. We had so in our high school, we had the first black kid that ever wanted to be white, right? Wiggas. They ended up using the term Wiggas, but they they'd never seen it before in our area, right? They'd never so they thought he was mentally handicapped, right? This kid, Brian St. Pierre. 
So they put him in the learning disabled classes, right? And he just had on like a starter jacket and was like a Larry Johnson fan, right? Like he just listened to like, you know, Bell Biv DeVoe. He was just the first white kid that wanted to be black. Okay. They just never seen it. He was yeah, like Michael was Rappaport. We, I remember you know? that. Uh, we had one that was doing break dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody had one, right? And they didn't know. But in our town, that was a learning disability, I guess. <laughs> My town too. So they pretty, put him a... in the they put him in the learning disabled classes. You had kids in wheelchairs, kids with Down syndrome, kids with, you know, like, you know, kids that had. Yeah, he's he's Down doing syndrome. this. Come on, guy, you understand? Yeah, yeah, he's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, so we had like, but I remember it just I remember being in middle school and it was so much fun, bro. Junior high and shit. Those those times, they I think they prep you for the rest of your life to laugh that hard. To the camaraderie, yes, the lifting each other up, no matter how bad it got, we you break one another, oh, breaking each other to the point where you let your guard down. I still live for that. I live to hang out, uh, closed doors, yeah, laugh our ass. We go as far and wide as we want, as funny as we want, as dark as we yeah. want. There's just no judging. There's nothing better than full blown trust in those moments. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Did you, uh, who made you laugh? Who's somebody that's really gotten you over the years that really makes you laugh? Comedian? Yeah, or has in the day. We talked about Rob Schneider a little bit. Oh, yeah. He's that's so what talented at going in. He told his mother just passed away and he was going into oh. all these stories about her life. But then while he's telling him, he starts acting out some of the characters and it wasn't like a bit he was doing. He was just, yeah, he's just talking. Acting them out. Yeah, he's just talking. Oh, man. Some of it was so good. He, you know, it's really weird. I, I was on a radio, I, I would do radio years ago. And I always, Rob was always one of my favorites. <clears throat> and um, he came on the radio and I, he didn't want to be there. He was in a bad mood. Yeah. And it happens. And it was a long time ago. And so I always thought from that moment, like, oh man, you don't like me. Yeah. <laughs> You don't like me. <laughs> and so there's still times when I feel like going, because I, I follow him. Yeah. I like what he says. Yeah, me too. I like I like what he puts out there. Yeah. And there's so many times where I feel like going, hey, man, I don't know if you I just want to. <laughs> See if you like I'm like, no, I, I really think you're cool. I mean, I don't know if you don't like me. I don't know why you don't like me. <laughs> Do you think that we take things? I take things if somebody doesn't give me a certain vibe, I, I, it then lands on me that they don't like me. But me too. I why, take it why very personally. Why do you think personal. that is? Yeah, why do you think that is? Because you know. You know. You know what? That they don't, you mean? Yeah, or they just, it's, it's a... Uh, but they don't, it's, they're not thinking of it that far. We're taking yeah, you're it right. that far. You're right. Or maybe it's just like you're below them. Like I took it as, it was so long ago. This is... You know, right, this I'm just is, thinking, I guess, generally, like when I, I, I notice that a lot for myself, if something happens, even in a moment, it might mean nothing to them. It's yeah, just, this thing with Rob with me had to be 14, 15 years ago. Yeah, and he's probably just having to, he's probably doing morning radio and doesn't want to do it. He was, now, to, yeah, and as soon as it's over, I'm like, this is his 40th? Freaking oh. interview! You had him doing nonstop. He's done. He's done. He's tired of saying the same thing. And uh, it was. But we take things personally, I though. That's personally. what's interesting. I was like, oh man, I don't like. Really, I don't thought like we'd it. hit it all. I had this whole plan like we're gonna be hanging yeah. out. We're gonna be hanging oh, yeah, out. We're gonna be in a hot air balloon. And... We're gonna. <laughs> we're gonna. Yeah. Have you ever been to Africa? Yeah. Dude, you gotta go to a safari. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we're gonna go to the one of those massage parlors. One of the real good ones. The yes. Vietnamese ones where they blow dart you in the neck right oh. when you go in. It's nothing yeah. better. Yeah. You wake up in fucking tight you try pay. To, you try to fight passing out. You know <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. You see the other guys coming. Like, no. <laughs> no. He makes he merely makes me laugh. Spade makes me laugh. McDonald makes me laugh. I know everybody you you Norm makes me laugh hard. Dude, he does hold on, I'll tell you a thing about Norm. Hard. So he did this thing one time. He gets up to go from one room into another room, right? He stops at the doorway and he's like what what is what, what is this? What is like a what is this? He's like banging on the door, like just the doorway. He's like, well, what is like a portal to like another? What is this? And he's asked. He's literally asking the people in the room, right? What is what? What do you call this thing? It's like a like a portal to what? Is, what? How do you just go through? Where am I? <laughs> and he was just talking about a doorway, but it was so he makes anything funny. Yeah, I remember we were, it was me him. He came to, it was, I think he was 
doing a show with Spade in Irvine. And uh, I went to go watch. And he came at, we went in the, we went like by the dumpster afterwards. And it was me, him. Oh, I know what you're talking about outside. Yeah. That little outside area where you park. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if it was, it was one of the person there. I don't remember who was there. So he said, uh, hey, bro, you want to get stoned? I went, nah, man. I stopped. He goes, what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fucking guy from Hat Bay. You can't fucking stop I'm getting high. <laughs> Fuck you, Diana. He was so angry <laughs> that I didn't want to get high. He was so pissed. <laughs> he was genuinely pissed. The fuck is that? Who oh. the fuck is brewing? You're fucking high. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The fuck is what? Are you joining my guy? Jesus Christ, bro. What the fuck? He was so. He gonna judge me now? And, no. No. Yeah. I just. I stopped for a while, man. You're That's like, I all. I smoked it all. I, just, I did everything. I smoked as much as I could. I beat the shit out of marijuana. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hard. Yeah, I think you what? won. One hit is. I was crushing it. <laughs> I'm I'm meeting I'm meeting Vaughn years before talking about punching <laughs> elephants in the nuts. Been there, done that. I did it, yeah. Dude, he uh w one time I had to open up for him in this is at a casino. We we're doing like a casino gig in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Wow. And Cherokee Creek Casino, I think. And it could have I don't know, this cool lady that I think maybe tried to make love to somebody, but she also helped us get the gig and um Norm was fucked up. I think that when he went on, he went on after me. Like I don't think he, he I don't even think for the first seven minutes, I don't even think he said anything, right? But the crazy part was, the next day, um, we were at there was like a we had to play cards too. The next day, you had to like be there for the weekend, you mm -hmm. know. So we go to the card tables, and Norm's like, man, there's a lot of a lot of good pussy in here. Huh? <laughs> And, and I don't know him really well. So I'm thinking, I'm looking around this room, bro. There is zero attractive women, right? There's zero attractive men, okay? Right, right. So it's not, even if you wanted some it's ass pussy, there's nothing. Yeah, it's a casino. And it's a it's a gambling game. It's poker. Yeah. yeah Five-card yeah. poker, you know? So, yeah. and I'm just thinking, well, I guess I just agree with him. You know, he's getting older and, you know, maybe he has a different perception of what's attractive. And I'm like, sure? I'm like, yeah, man, there's, there's sure is. He goes, fuck no, there isn't. Like he had played me, you know, like he was like, this is the ugliest batch of people I've ever seen. I was just talking about him the other night. Now, I was oh. there for one of the greatest Norm moments in comedy history. I think he, he was kicked. He was kicked out of Nebraska. That sounds realistic. Um. And I, you, you can maybe look it up later. Where it says Norm McDonald was kicked out of the state by the governor, <clears throat> and he went on, he went on Letterman to talk about it. <laughs> uh, and I want to say it was like 1996 because I just finished my first year at SNL. It was 95, so it was the summer of 96. And I remember going on tour. There you go. You saw it. Go down. Yeah, kicked out of Iowa. That's me talking about it. Okay. Uh, but anyway, should we look on a video or should we? No, nah, no, nah, don't look at that. I want to see the real. There has to be a headline. How Norm McDonald got kicked out of Iowa? Yes. Okay. Gazette. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. So <laughs> many were disgusted, some were delighted. <laughs> so he's supposed now. You got to stand something. Okay. Mm -hmm. He this is the first time me touring with a star. Okay. We go to the airport and people are like, oh my God, you're Norm McDonald. Like, wow, this is everywhere we went. Oh my God, you're Norm McDonald. We show up at the university. He's like, eh, I got to go golfing with the fucking governor tomorrow. They made me a fucking golf. <laughs> fucking governor. Yeah, yeah fucking. what is that game where you fucking <laughs> hit the right? thing? So I'm like, he's, he's with a governor. This is huge. Who gets to say that? So. I'm, I'm, it's me, Daryl Hammond, and him. And you, you, wait, all, both of you guys went? We're all, we're okay, on the sorry. gig. Okay, okay. We're going out. He's Darryl telling us. Daryl Hammond, yes. And so, uh, we get to the gig <laughs> and is, is packed. And they go, now listen, there's kids here and there's students and alum and the dean and all these people here. So, oh, that's the worst. They're like, yeah, clean. I get it. No worries. I go, we're, we're in Sunday Light. He goes, that's why we got you guys, because you're used to live TV. So Daryl goes up first, does his 20 minutes, does impressions, does his comedy. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, I go up, do my 20, feel great, crush it. 
Norm goes up. I'm not even exaggerating. The first thing he says, he goes up, he goes, uh, it's like I'm preparing. I'm like, this is going to launch my career. Are you kidding me? This is going to be huge. I'm going to be all. He goes, uh, fucking, where the fuck at me? First person to even curse. Right? I went, oh, shit, he cursed. He goes, so if you're gay, would you rather be the ass guy or the dick guy? <laughs> <laughs> this is what he starts off with. And so I go, I go, Daryl, you gotta go see this. And he's going, and he won't stop. He's like, because if, if you're the ass guy, <laughs> why do you want to be the ass guy? I mean, first of all, and he's going on. People are grabbing their kids, running up the aisle. They're, f I mean. I never saw a place clear out. It looked like a fire alarm was going off. But the college students were staying, and yeah. they were howling with laughter. And he, <laughs> one thing, and then in the middle, after about 15 minutes, he goes, Jesus Christ, what are you, are you fucking airplane jokes? Are you want fucking 7-Eleven jokes? Hey, Jesus Christ, fuck out of here. So the next day, in the paper, USA Today or the Gazette, like Norm McDonald's out. Wow. Governor wants him out of the state. <laughs> the governor wants him. Throw it, get out of my state. <laughs> but to witness that was I. I have so many Norm moments in my life. My my first press conference with Norm was. They prepped us into like you know yeah, this is you gotta speak and this is some it's live and be BBC and and he's a bigger star than you so you have to sit there and kind of pay you have to be it was him and Spade right next to so me so you have to be second fiddle at the moment or were you they, just, yeah man I just right. got I'm 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 the new kid on the block we're all a new okay. cast it's an all new cast except okay. for Spade Tim Meadows and Norm Macdonald wow and we're like whoa and even looking at norman spain i was like oh these guys are star like this is huge yeah I bet. i'm really looking up to them and uh the press conference go and i dropped the ball right out of the bat right out of the bat um they asked me the Lord, the head of nbc who fought for me to be there goes uh jim what was it like growing up watching snl and now you're here you're from new york and now a fellow new yorker i said i didn't watch snl growing up well you can hear i was like oh i saw Lord. i went oh that was that was spade went <laughs> <laughs> so he said <laughs> and i knew right away like oh man that was really bad that was a bad and so he goes <laughs> i go well i i I wasn't allowed to because I was young. And he goes, well, what about when you were old? He's trying to prep me. He goes, surely when you got older and and you were allowed to watch yes. it. And I went, I was out on Saturdays. I wasn't watching TV. And and, <laughs> <laughs> and Norm's like, uh, they're going to like you. <laughs> they're going to like you. Uh, this guy, this is my guy. And he's smoking. He's, <laughs> no way. He's smoking, <laughs> and, and Marcy Klein is going, No, put out the cigarette. Like, I'm not done. <laughs> this guy's going to get fired. So I think I'm going to get fired because I saw Lauren Michaels' face. He was pissed. So you're sitting there super nervous at this point? I swear in my life, in my kids' lives, I thought I was going to get fired Damn. because I just basically said, I don't watch Sunday Live. Yeah. And I never did. And yeah, which is not, not a good answer. It's not the message. In front of the press. Yeah. And I didn't say it in a mean manner, but I could just tell the boss man was like, uh, so I went, oh, Jesus, Lord. So now I'm sitting there thinking I'm going to get fired. Swear to God. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I didn't even get, I didn't even make it to the first episode. They're going to let me go. This is what's going on in my head. There has, there has to be a video of this press conference in the black market somewhere. I, I've looked for it, never found it. It's the 1995 press conference. And, and so they ask Norm, they go, Norm, you, Tim Meadows, David Spade, you've been here. You, you know the frat house. Everyone knows SNL is a frat house. What kind, of, what kind of practical jokes you got lined up for these new cast members? And I swear to you, I went, I'm not even going to be part of the, the frat house or the practical jokes. Damn. And Norm goes, eh, eh. He, first of all, he's annoyed. He goes, practical jokes? Is that what you asked? What kind of practical jokes? Eh, well, first we were thinking about 
anal rape. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, hey, hey, yeah, take your pen. We're going to anally rape you. <laughs> Welcome to Saturday Live. I'm going, oh, shit. He's going to get fired, too. Yeah, yeah. You can't say anal rape in yeah. front of the press. Yeah. He said anal rape. So suddenly you're like, I'm back in this. I'm in it. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And I went up to him after I went, Nori's like, they don't give me. No, he gets a shit, bro. You know, he gets, fuck these guys. Yeah. And I realized he would pitch at the pitch meeting. He just didn't care. He didn't care. And I learned so much from him. Just clearly he saw a lot and he's been there forever like he would i remember he he get, he got he gathered the new cast up he's like he got sporting ideas hey uh don't write me any of your gay sketches he goes i'll do it and i'm telling you right now and i do a sketch is getting on but don't put me in your gay little <laughs> sketches. <laughs> I swear to God, man. Did he, it, <laughs> I also traumatized him. We would were, we were play football in the hallway because uh -huh. he was very competitive. He's always betting. And it was a very tiny hallway, maybe as wide as this, maybe. And uh, he goes, come on, Barry, thank you, we're playing. <laughs> Three in the morning, go fucking come on, we're playing fucking playing football. Me, you, Colin Quinn, and fucking uh, Justin, Justin, you fucking fuck the phone calls. No one's calling three in the morning. Get the fucking ball, let's go. So he would cheat, would piss me off because I'm competitive, and I'll never forget. He keeps cheating and cheating, and now I'm pissed. How's right? he cheating? It's like a hallway. It's like a hospital hallway. It's hallway, but he fucking right. cheat. He's right. a cheater. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, he, he I is had, a cheater. I had boots on. Yeah. So I had, I had work boots on. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, you're supposed to write in. Yeah. I'm supposed to be writing fucking work boots on, I'm yeah. stone. Like, oh, the oh, ink's man. heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now <laughs> he, he, he cheated. I caught the ball, and then he, he grabbed it and pulled it from me. He's like, hey, he fumbled. And he starts running the other way. I'll never forget. I fucking kicked him yeah. as he's running in his, in his calf. I went, Pow! <laughs> and he goes, ah! ah! Jesus Christ, bro! Why did you fucking kick me in my fucking calf? Oh, I said, could you cheat and say you fucking kick me? <laughs> ah! Jesus Christ! And all he did all week, he like, fucking bro, you fucking kick me in my calf? Because I took the fucking ball? Jesus Christ, bro! <laughs> And Spade just in the distance, like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> huh. yeah, I had a good. Uh. And so, those little moments, I absolutely, I, I loved more of that stuff. Yeah. You know, all of it was worth it. All of it was worth it. Wasn't easy, but it was all worth it. Damn. God, so, damn, I'm exhausted. Yeah, we'll finish up, man. I could talk for hours. We'll chat. We'll chat another uh, another night. I'm, our, I'm coming to the show tonight. I'm gonna come watch. So. Which one? Not sure. Which one's better? You think? Probably. Well, the second one, I'll pro. I'm looser and I'll go longer. The first one. I'll come second one then. Because um. Yeah, you're on time tight. restraint. Time, yeah. Yeah, it's still early in the. And a lot of my bits are long. So I I constantly go okay. So I'm 40 minutes in. Uh, should I do this one or that? So it's I I think a little bit more in the first shows where well, last excuse me last night is no thinking. Second shows it's no thinking. I'm yeah. just like yeah. I'm just, if I feel like going this way, I go this way. I mean, go that way, I go that way. Did it change? Did it, has, has comedy changed for you in different times? Like, were there times where you got to like, uh, okay, this was my set, and then you started to change at a per as a person? Because this one thing I'm noticing for myself, like sometimes I'm trying to maybe still be a person that did a set from previous in my life, but I'm I'm being I'm different as a human. Yeah, and it's scary to think, will I still be able to be funny as this person that's growing and getting different? than I was as this person who was It's scary, but you will be. You've you've long passed that part. Yeah. You've you've learned to grow. 
You've learned to grow as a person. You, you, you've learned to grow as an entertainer. You learn to grow. <clears throat> you learn, you've, you've created your audience and your following, and you will make them grow up with you in every direction. Oh, wow. And that's what I discovered. My biggest fear was, I'm a family guy. I'm getting really exhausted trying to appeal to something I'm not. Totally, yeah, yeah. And at that time, yeah, I was kind of st- I was stoner. I, was, I loved, yeah, man, he's saying, life's good, haha. And it was great. But once I had kids, I started moving along. I'm like, I'm not this guy, and I'm tired. Uh, I I can't hold on to pretend to be in this person for so much longer. And then as I grew, it was, it was around 2008. So I was just like, listen, I'm going on a ride. If you guys want to come along, come along, but I'm never going to be. I can't be what I was 5, 10, 15 years ago because I'm not. Yeah. I'm letting you no go. No one is. I'm letting you go, huh? I got to let you go. I loved you for being there, but we'll move it along. And my, I have to say, the audience grew to, to a point where I had no... They, and not only did they grow, you created everyone you want to be with. Wow. And that's what you're going to do, and that's what you do do. Wow, that's fascinating to hear that. Yeah, Dorfman at... Um, at the club says this is the funniest that he's ever seen you he said he oh me. i feel because i just he said that the other day i'm really good in uh, at life i'm really good uh what what, you, what today said that? no we i saw him the other night i stopped by to see schneider get, oh so schneider he did, even like, he'd even shows. see me last night no he hadn't seen you he just said from the last time he just he just talked about your career a little bit and then yeah i got better yeah he was telling me that too so he, i said yeah because i i'm not trying anymore I know I'm funny. Yeah. I know I'm going to entertain you. I'm very comfortable with going in certain directions. Even if I go too heavy, I know I'm going to come back and smack you with something else. Yeah. There's some material I'm doing now that I'm bored with, and I want to do a lot. Like I'll come out and go, I'm going to do the first half hour just winging it. But then, I, But then I'll see they're really stoked, mm-hmm. and I'll go, ah. Yeah. There's that thing in your head. I don't want to... Mm, I, I don't know if this is the crowd to take the chance with. I don't want to waste... They're like this, and the last thing I want to do is bring them here and then bring them back. And so, yeah, it's a constant mind game. Well, my, my show, both, every show's different. Cool. Well, I'll be out there tonight. Cool. Um, and uh, thanks so much for hanging out, bro. Oh, my God. This was such a good time. Dude, it's I awesome, I could have talked. Man forever and ever and i appreciate you giving me that opportunity and giving me that trust and and uh this whole feeling it's good energy man thanks man yeah it's exciting to hear and just to learn and just to, i think i look at other comedians and yeah just even hearing that i'll be okay and that this is a performer this is a human you know i think there's a level of that that you know especially getting involved in hollywood and this just all the whole journey it's you like need that. well i'll be okay as a human you know you'll be fine you're you already are yeah you're already there <clears throat> Amen, bro. Thanks, man. Brother, be good. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones, but it's gonna take a little time. For me to set that parking brake and let myself